dun, 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 dun. it's so epic at the end. I know. I was I was thinking about this weekend, uh, changing the intro a little bit to oh, not a little bit, but to that thing that we talked about last time, where it was like, has this ever happened to you? And yeah. you know, do like a black and white thing and stuff like that. I, I just ran out of time. And it oh, it'd be so funny. Yeah, it may, eventually we'll, you know, whenever that uh, that free time happens that yeah I, I hear a lot about that but yeah, i mysterious really... free time yeah 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 um yeah so uh this is the full 42 if you haven't uh seen this show before oh we already got comments hi hi katya uh if you haven't seen the show before uh just a couple geeks talking about geek stuff or games uh uh today the loki uh episode one it's been out oh nice Nice. Um, it's funny you mentioned if I had a Loki cup for today because I just got it. Like it came yesterday, Saturday. It came Saturday. When we start talking Loki, you should put the cup up where everybody can see it, and that'll be like our spoiler uh, sure. notice, basically. Um, I'll drink while we're talking spoilers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that means you you can't drink until we talk spoilers. No, that's one. That's not going to happen, and two, I'll probably end up on the floor. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, uh, so, oh, before I forget, like you know what? Tomorrow's my birthday. It is. Your yours is coming up for my birthday. Hit the little like button. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, if you're not, it, we get like what 50, 60 views on average, kind of thing. We yeah. get like six likes. It's, more likes. It doesn't so hurt. All you want for your birthday is a thumbs up. Yeah, from our viewers. <laughs> you know, I want games and stuff, maybe from people that know me, but you know. <laughs> um, but uh, and you know, it doesn't. You know, it's not like you and I make money or anything off the show. It's not big enough, but it, it's just fun to see. It just makes me happy to see people liking stuff. And if you don't like me asking, give me a thumbs down. I just want some reaction. I think you'd almost be happier if people were giving you thumbs downs. Sometimes. Thumbs down. I, I actually laughed the first time we ever got one. So, yeah. Well, to be fair, I got one, right? It was just me on the screen. So, yep. Thank you. Um, yeah, big week ahead, right? Your birthday is tomorrow. Katia's and mine is the 19th, which is Saturday. Yep. We have a big birthday celebration show next week, which will be super fun. And I can't wait for it. Yeah. We'll have lots of people on playing games. Yep. Chilling out. Yep. Um, we, whenever it's just you and me, we do our guesses for each other. You said you had something a little different, a little weird. I do. I have more of a guessing game. So I still went with the guess, but more of a guessing game. All right. Mine's just one question, kind of simple. So you want to do mine first and we'll get into yours? Yeah. I thought you were going to share a picture with me, by the way. I can't share it to you early. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So I'll share you um, my one. You'll pull them up, and we'll see what happens. All right, cool. Let me share my screen, and this will be uh, this is my guess. Uh, uh, we haven't known each other long. What five months now? This is our twentieth episode. I believe. Yeah, I think the QSCon episode I had you on was what uh, August, September, November, last year? November. I think was it November? Yeah. And then we started uh, this the twenty fifth, right yeah. around when Texas got frozen. Right. <laughs> right. Just in yeah. time. Yep, that just in time for us to enjoy that. Um, so uh, we still don't know everything there is about to know each other, even though um, I guess we we almost talk every day at this point, almost, yeah. at least a little bit. Yeah. Um, the funny well, we thing, have a very active Discord that gets us talking. Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. talk to each other either, but the Discord uh, channel is yeah. really fun. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, it is in the uh, it is in the description of the video or Discord chat. Um, I feel like it's like, because I work at home, right? I feel like it's my office friends. You know what I'm talking about? Like just anytime while I'm working, people say little funny things. And I get to, um, if you're bored, if you're working at home, <laughs> even if you're at an office where there aren't fun people to talk to, man, just hop on the Discord. It's great. Yeah. Um, just a bunch of friends really hanging out, right? Yeah, they do. They do. And it's, it's the same people that are... are kind of like a little it's like our little group now it's it's pretty cool yeah which i guess is the community that you build on discord and it, it's working like even though peter's out in the west 
Katia's up in California. You're in tech. Like, we're all kind of all over the place. Katia's in Canada, right? Canada, yeah. What did I say? Same thing. You said California. <laughs> Peter's in California. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're spread yeah. out all over the place. So, uh, but it doesn't feel that yeah, way. It feels right. like we're all kind of around the same area. Yeah, so come and join us. Join the party. Um, so what I was getting at, though, because we talk all the time, um, Aaron, my partner, asked me something basic about you. I forgot, like, uh, if you were married or something. I have no idea. I don't know. Isn't that ridiculous? I don't know. Are you? Are you married? Is this is this your guess? No, no, no. It's not. It just, oh. like, popped in my head. Like, I should know this by now, right? Of course, just a few weeks ago, I didn't realize you had a beard, so... That, this is true, which apparently just popped up overnight. So I'm not very observant. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, you don't have to answer me. I'll I'll go on being uh, uh, living in mis uh, a mystery here. I just, I live in a cave in a dungeon with all my cardboard <laughs> friends. That's that's kind of all I do. I'm really I thought you'd have something. I thought you had oh, no no guess. no no. I do have a guess. I do. Have yeah, I just, I thought it was something more along those lines. Um, but to answer your question, no, I am I am not. Oh okay. That would have been my guess because you haven't mentioned someone by now, but you know, who knows? Um, yeah, I don't know a lot about you to be honest. So we like to ask each other questions, and apparently they're questions that have nothing to do about our real lives. Because sure. <laughs> here's that question uh, for me. Let me share my screen because <laughs> I, I like to put text up here. Um, so you. Hypothetical situation. One of these things have to pop into existence, and you must choose one. Okay. Okay. So here are your choices. You get three choices. A, a Star Wars live-action musical starring Jack Black as a Jedi who has discovered the true nature of the Force, which is love. This is canon. This will be canon. It will count. It will be part of everything. Okay. I really hope it gets better from there. Uh, B. <laughs> it doesn't. An Avengers movie where the multiverse slip up causes heroes to be Muppets as they battle Silver Surfer played by Jason Statham. Okay. So you can have that one or that one. Or C. The Mandalorian Season 3 starts off with Mando slipping on ice and dying. Then Jar Jar finds his suit and carries on the series as a new Mandalorian. So I almost wore my Mandalorian jersey that came today, and I'm kind of happy I didn't because that's just offensive. That's just offensive. <laughs> They're all three awful things. You have to pick the one that gets to be <sighs> a thing. Oh, oh, I have my guess, uh, but you think about it, and then I'll tell you what my guess is, and you tell me if I was right. They all suck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the point. And remember, they're all canon. You can't be like, ah, eh, that never happened. That third season never happened. Nope. It's going to continue. Maybe even go the fourth season, fifth season. Uh, you know, a more Avengers movies. And and things made afterwards will call back to what happens in those movies. You won't be able to take them out like Highlander 2. But, I mean... Oh man! All right, I have, I have. All right, so with with option B, well, don't tell me what your answer. Well, I've actually the next frame is the highlighted red of what I guess. So okay, you can go ahead and tell me. All right, with B, does it end up being a blip? Like the five years where everyone gets like brought back, and everyone was like, "Hey, like the Muppets happened," but it's not really the Muppets anymore, right? Like they're not Muppets yep. from then on. Okay. At the end of the movie, they'll go back to being normal and stuff, but they were Muppets, and they'll remember they were Muppets, and they'll ha there'll be pictures of them being Muppets. Yeah. And it's just them. Jason Statham's normal. Well, he's silver and all that. But... Yeah, he's got to be all silver, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm laughing here because we're getting you, – you can only pick – yeah. We got B from Katia, C from Dan. <laughs> oh. You got to pick one. No one for A, huh? A live action musical. Yeah, A is out the window. I mean, 
Mm -mm. I can't. I'm not. Matt has got a pretty good voice, actually. To make yeah, sure. but he's just a dick. He'd be the Jedi, too. All dressed up like a Jedi. <laughs> What, in his friggin' uh, Speedos that he wears in his YouTube videos where he's dancing to dumb... No, I, I can't... No, no, no. He'd be dressed like a Jedi. Okay. Yeah. He was in the floors. You know, all the faces yeah. he makes and stuff? No, no, no. <laughs> hey, he's out there, no. Which is powered by love. <laughs> no. Nope. So I'm talking, you know, that one. Okay, so the Avengers one... Okay. I was off A when A was the only option. <laughs> <laughs> that was done. So you'd rather ruin the Mandalorian series? I didn't say that yet. Okay. But I think the Mandalorian season without Mando is kind of... Regardless of that second sentence, which is just complete shite to begin with, <laughs> I think the Mandalorian without, without the Mandalorian isn't the Mandalorian, right? Unless... Well, no, no, no. He's uh, Jar Jar will take on the oath of the Mandalorian. He'll be forget a about Mandalorian. the second sentence. I said forget about the second sentence. Okay. Jar Jar is not a Mandalorian, so forget forget. He'll become Jar -Jar. one. What? He'll become one. No. He'll take, he'll take the oath or whatever it is. Although he'll have to put little holes in the top of the helmet so the eye stucks stick out. Oh, can you imagine? Can you do a fan art of Jar Jar as a Mandalorian with the? I'm sure, eye? it exists out there somewhere already. Oh, God, it, it, it's my my final answer <laughs> is B. Really, you want to see the Muppet Avengers? Jason Statham playing Silver Surfer is the worst part of this sentence for me. I mean, I like, I like Jason Statham, but oh, that face, the little angry face. Just oh, it'd take me out of the whole thing. I'd be like, that's Jason Statham. I can't look at this guy. I would be way, way better. I, it, it would feel better watching that than Jar Jar as a Mandalorian <laughs> or Jack Black as, as a Jedi. Like Poor Jack Black. No, not poor Jack Black. The best thing he did was Tenacious D in that one song. That was it. Let me, let me ask you. Uh, let me ask you. Is it Jack Black that you have a problem with or the fact that it's a musical? No, I don't mind the musical. I was fine. That first line, a Star Wars live action musical starring. Okay. Jack Black. Nope. No? Okay. No, I'm not. I'm just not a fan of his at all. I'm not. He's well, even annoying in the, in the uh, whatchamacallit, um, the Jumanji reboot. Like, it's what? funny, but. Oh, I, I think he's one of the best parts in that. Oh, God, he's so annoying. Well, nope. I didn't know you felt that way about Jack Black, so I nice agree. one of his Tenacious D, the the guitar pick of Destiny, where David Grohl is the demon. Like that whole thing was great, and I could watch it over and over again. Some of Tenacious D's stuff is all right, but he, I just can't get behind him. I just think he's. <laughs> yeah. I, and yeah. if, you, if you eliminated B and gave me A and C, I'd probably just disconnect and leave. Like, I wouldn't even have an answer for you. <laughs> well, I knew I had to give you at least three, right? Right. But, like, if it came down to Jack Black and Jar Jar, oh, my God. Uh, oh, ooh, what about Jack Black and Jar Jar together? Delete. They're delete. <laughs> delete. How do I delete this? What do I, what do, I do? Yeah, that's great. Oh, God. Uh, getting over by my light here. Uh, man. Um, okay. Well, that was as fun as I thought it'd be. Whew. Torturous, torturous questions here. Yeah, but I, like Katia was saying, uh, Jack Black's a wild card in musicals. I don't, I, I don't mind the musical thing, like Star Wars on Ice. Like even that would be like, it'd be really cheesy and dumb, but I'd watch it. Where like Jack Black as a Jedi, I meh, can't do it. He'd be doing the, like the, you know how he just sings things and makes mm -hmm. those faces and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. Oh God, that was that was just rude. Clear. I don't want any of those things. I just thought it'd be fun to ask you. What would you pick if you had to put one into existence? What would yours be, Jack Black? Yeah, I'd pick A. Hmm. Yeah. Because I don't mind Jack Black that much. I think he's silly. I would just look at it as a comedy. But uh, this is going to be canon in the thing that you love the most. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'd be happy about it. 
You also said that you were okay with Jar Jar popping into the Clone Wars when I had a huge problem with that thing. And the yeah, different I don't mind Jar Jar being Jar Jar and just popping in every now and then. So you'd rather Jack Black in a musical as a Jedi talking about love as the Force rather than Jar Jar taking over the Mandalorian mantle? I don't want Mando to die. Okay, but if that were the... You'd still pick Jack Black over Jar Jar, like, going, I'll do this for him. Like, I'll... Oof. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I want the Mandalorian to continue to be awesome. I mean, they'd cancel it so hard. The whole internet would just cancel it so hard if that was episode one of season three, right? Sure. Like... They would petition for it to discontinue. Don't even show us what else you've made. So many losses of accounts on D Disney Plus if that happened. But everyone would be on board with Jack Black in a musical. No, no, they wouldn't be happy about that either. But okay. at least it's at least it's an addition to something. It's not ruining something that is currently being. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Like right now, I have no expectations of any kind of musical Star Wars or anything. So if they pop up one, I'll be like, oh, geez, that's weird, but whatever kind of thing. But with this, I'm like, I can't wait for season three of Mandalorian. And then they show me that. It's like such bigger letdown, right? Yeah, I guess that would be a, a swift kick if that were the case. See, I've learned more about Mike. <laughs> that's true. That's true. The more you know. Yeah, the more you know. Half the battle. All right. So you have stuff to send me? Pictures? I do. Oh, and I'll be sharing my screen, of course. Otherwise, this would be boring for people to watch. This is very true. So I'm going to make sure that I am in the message with you. So I'm not sharing this to other rando people that have no idea why they're getting pictures of this stuff. Well, they're about to see it on the video. So uh, I just lost my orange. Loki <laughs> ate the orange. Mischief, mischief, mischief. Uh, now I can't say it. Mischievous Six, camp. That's right. Eight. All right. So I have eight pictures. The first one is kind of to give you an idea of what this is going to be about. Okay. All right. I have pulled, before I send the first one to you, I have pulled eight game pieces from eight games. All right. They are all games you should know. Katia's going to help me, right? Sure. <laughs> they're all games you should know. All right. And they're oh, all... Because they're behind me? They're all, I don't know if they're all behind you. Oh, okay. But they are all orange. Okay. So I grabbed orange right. pieces from... My favorite color, I like it. Popular right. games or games you should definitely know. Okay. Good, okay. Good. So for instance... This should be fun. Piece number one. Is right there. Oh, okay. So let me show everybody. Oh, wow. It's slowing down here. Let me show everybody. This will give me a chance to share so that we have it. I can't believe I lost my orange. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the ship from Asking for Troubles. So it is. I agree with this share. So I win. We're good. You win, yeah. You're, so you're next, one for one. Uh, yeah. Yep. Next. Um, Next game. Okay. Number two. <laughs> oh, there's more. Okay. Oh, there's eight. Oh, I'm going to say, say you get six. My my guess, my my target is six of eight. Uh, well, that's from zero. Sure is. Because we just did played. You, did you go out and get the game? I did. Oh, okay. You can't hear about a game without getting it. Um. So I ended up talking to my sister recently, and. I told her about that experience and she thinks it would be a really cool thing to do for her and her office. Oh, okay. So I'm going to actually run a game through some sort of internet thing to her and her office based on that game. So thank you for yeah, sure. There, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff on there that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that wasn't, uh, uh, I guess, geek based or uh, pop culture based too, sure. which is interesting. Yeah. Like states that border whatever. Right. Yep. All yes, right. zero is so All right. Far, how many are there? There are eight again. Okay, great. There will still be eight the next time you ask me. You know, I'm asking you every time now, right? That's perfect. And here is number three of eight. All right. 
Oh, I know this one too. Let me put it up here so people can know with me. That is from Crusaders. It is. Very good. Is it is the to- full title Crusaders I Will Be Done? Yeah, it's Crusaders okay. I Will Be Done. I'm looking I think at Lance brags that he added that bit to the title. Yeah, because Crusaders, eh. I, I just call it Crusaders. I didn't. Yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite Rondell game. I'll, I'll put it that way. I tried to pick games that you've mentioned or you've played, or if you haven't, we can just ridicule you in the comments about it. Cool. And of course, it helps that any game that has orange bits, I usually play those orange bits. So. Right, right, right. Same with me. You play orange? Yeah, if it's there, I'll usually gravitate towards orange. What are we going to do when we meet up at a convention? We'll have to fight over orange. Um, so funny thing, I looked at five tribes because it's behind me, but I didn't. I didn't see the camels. I saw the red assassins, and I was like, "Oh, they got red," but I didn't see the camels. Oh yeah, they have them though. Yeah, well, and two, no, you have the expansion. All right, there's number four. <laughs> uh, yep, I know this one too. You should. That would be holy. I hope no. Hmm. Yeah, that's holy, isn't it? It is. Okay. It's the orange. I was gonna do this to you. I was gonna hold that side up. Oh yeah. That would have been a little harder. Might be a little too difficult. Yeah. All right, four for four. Not bad. Gotcha. It says purple or orange for her. Yeah, tell us what your uh, player preferred player color is. Uh, if Peter's on, I know his is yellow because we often fight over yellow when orange isn't there. Huh. Yeah, we did that during the game too, didn't, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, what we got next? All right, number five. Oh, no. Huh. Is that the Infinity Gem from Marvel United? I am thoroughly impressed. Cool. Well done. I guess, let's see, is that the Soul Gem? That would be the Soul Gem. Yeah. Well done. I, I figured you'd, you'd miss that one. Thank you. Thank you for not having the uh, confidence in me. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I played Marvel United for the first time this week. I that's why I pulled this in. I figured oh, maybe you looked at the Infinity one. I didn't open up the Infinity one though. I've only seen it like when we first got it. I opened everything to look at it, and that was like whenever it first came out. So wow! All right, hmm. I'm impressed. All right, number six. Okay, yeah, I can do this all day long. <laughs> Uh, that's Everdell, isn't it? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, depends on how big it is. Is that boss? Do you want you want to see how big it is? Oh, you hold it. You have it. Okay, that's Everdell, isn't it? I might have messed this one up. Oh, whoa, whoa, that's very thick. No, no, that's got to be Bosk. Is that Bosk? Oh, final answer, Bosk. Uh, you keep going back and forth. I don't know. There's also this little guy over here. I mean, you see it. You see him almost every show. I don't look at your screen. <laughs> yeah, final answer, Bosk. Final answer is Bosk. I'll give you that one. Yeah, I've never played it. I don't even have it. Should I do want to play it though? It yes, was one of those games that, uh, like, whenever I saw it, I thought, "Ooh, I need to get that game just because of the way it looks and stuff." And mm-hmm. then I went to it, probably cool stuff or something. They were sold out then. I was like, "All right, favorite." And I've just never seen the bin there to get it whenever I get groups of it, you know? Mm. Yeah, you should probably correct that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> All right. So I figured number five would be a trip up. And this one would be a trip up. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. You've hit you've hit six for six. Nice. I thought I'm you nervous. Missed. I thought you'd miss the the stone, which you got. I'm assuming you're going to get the last one, and I think this is going to be this was the other one that would trip you up. No, I'm nervous. It's a tricky one. 
Ooh. There may be people in the comments that know this one, so. Okay, uh, comments, don't say anything just yet. I want to try to think this through, but I want you to be able to look. Okay. Uh, I won't look at the comments. I, I'll I'll look at the image while I think it. You can I can I can show you it's, yeah. it's, it's comments can jump in if they want because I won't look at it until I say something. You, oh, you're going to show it to me. I mean, okay. if you want to look at its thickness and what it is. See the size of. Well, I know it's not Dinosaur Island. Uh, I don't think this is a game I own. Might be a game that we've talked about or something like Boss, right? But maybe not one I own. I, uh, some kind of uh, kaiju thing? No? Man, you might have stumped me with this one. It doesn't really even look that familiar to me, to be honest. Uh, it's like a T-Rex with a sharp fin on the back or something. Hmm. All right, well, I got to make a guess. Let's see. If it's something I don't have, uh, how about Jurassic Park? Final answer? Yeah, because I, I, it really doesn't even look that familiar to me. Incorrect. Okay. Uh, the right answer is in the comments. Oh. Draftosaurus? Draftosaurus. I've never even heard of it. Oh, it's great. Really? It came out with two expansions. Um that kind of add to to like a north uh, and a and a south to the map. Um, super fun. Draftosaurus. Draftosaurus. Huh. A bag drafting game, I guess. Uh, you pull depending on the number of players. You pull dinosaurs of different colors, different species out of a bag. You draft one, and then you place it into your park and pass the rest. Yeah. And then you draft one from what's given to you and pass the rest. And you're trying to put them into your area based on certain scoring scoring things that are going to happen by the end of the game we got a little celebration going on here yeah yeah i figured she would have it by now i thought didn't didn't i thought she ordered it like a couple episodes ago maybe not i think peter's been drinking yes. <laughs> he knows that uh all right well you got me on one but I don't feel too bad since I've never seen this piece before. Okay, but I mean, I it is an orange piece, so. Well, I'm not familiar with all orange pieces. Okay. What about this one? This is the eighth one. Eighth one. Ooh. And you didn't think this would trip me up? No, I figured you'd get this one. Not going to look at the comments again. I don't know, actually. It doesn't look familiar. I don't know the arrow... Uh, thing right there. I don't know what that is. What is that? An ice cream cone on top? With arrows going everywhere, or fire, or yes, it is. Oh. A, it is an ice cream cone. Well it's not an ice cream cone. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I have no. Clue. This is something that's directing some kind of AI, probably. I bet. Uh, just because it's got directions on there. Um, hmm. No clue. How about Robo Rally? Incorrect. Yeah. Oh, did you Sagrada me? I sure did. I t you know I don't have any expansions for the Sagrada. I figured you would have pulled. I did the Holy piece and then off one, and then I did the Bosque piece and then off ones. I thought maybe you'd figure out that I'd end with Sagrada. I didn't even know that uh, they had their dice with different numbers, but that's interesting. Which uh, which expansion was it? Life? Yep, the second one. Okay. Yeah, the way the dice work, they they point to different things on your on your card. So when you put them into oh. your window, they'll point to like these two have to be the same color, or these two have to be the same number. Oh. Yeah. that's cool. Yeah, do they have? They don't have orange normally, right? So Correct. it's like a different color that goes in there and. Correct. Yep. Passion, uh, the second expansion technically, but the first of the facades gave you the rare glass, um, and then life gave you the orange glass. What's like the ice cream cone? It's an ice cream cone. You nailed it. <laughs> it's not an ice cream cone. What is it? Honestly, I don't know what it's called. Do you do you not know what it represents? I don't I don't know what it represents. What's the rule? 
Gotta oh. look it up. Oh, yeah. gotta look it up. Look at that. Wait in a minute. <laughs> um. Well, I'd feel bad if I missed one color. that. Different I'd feel color. bad if I missed one that uh, that I played and stuff like that. So I don't mind missing one. It, it's played. um. It's a think about a circle and a line through it, like the Ghostbusters sign, and it's over a drop of paint. Drop of water or paint or something. Paint, and then the orthogonal colors can't be the same. So it's telling you that they can't be. Yeah. There you go. Luckily, you don't work for the company. That made no, it. no. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Uh, that all you got for me? Just eight? I could play this all day. This that was eight. But I I, I mean, I, I, I figured you wouldn't get the gem. I figured you could get Sagrada, but you did end six for eight, which was my target. So nice. nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should do this more often. I like this. That, yeah, that was good. <laughs> I enjoy that. Um, and I had them all here ready in case. I'm just saying. Oh, that's good. I always get called so out for not even have to, to the show. So. <laughs> we didn't even have to do. Uh, we didn't even have to do the pictures. Then you could have just held them up. I would have made. Yeah. You... But I, with the glare and the light, I didn't want there to be an issue. I would have made you like this big. Great. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> but like, if this got blurry and you couldn't see it, or the light was being dumb, like I didn't want that to happen. So I figured. It, you had a picture. You can zoom into it, um, and then I had it here just in case you wanted to know what it really looked like. I agree. This is funny. Yeah, it is. It is. I just couldn't figure out it was a drop of paint. Uh, I forgot to put this up. <laughs> uh, those banners help me more than anybody else. Just to set the time. Uh, what are they called? The time pieces or whatever. Right. Time, they're not called time pieces. Time stamps? Time stamps. That's it. I got you. I know um, that I can come up with drop of paint, but I can come up with time stamps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. We should do that more. Ooh, you should make one uh, for all of us uh, next week. Okay. Don't just stick the orange, obviously. Go, go nuts with it. But Sure. And then tell me what they are ahead of time so that I can beat everybody. Not going to happen. Course. Um, feel like talking about Loki? Uh, sure. I mean, it is on our title and thumb. Yes, Loki. So we're going to talk about the uh, first episode, first and only episode so far of Loki. If you haven't seen the episode, pause, go away, whatever, because we're going to spoil the whole thing. And it's going to be way more fun to watch the episode than it is to watch this. If you are watching us live and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hear this, just mute us. As long as, can you put your drink in the middle or something? As long as that drinks in the middle, we're going to be talking about Loki. I'll also uh, have the little banner down there, and then once you see that goes away, you can unmute us. Uh, I just don't want to spoil it for anybody because it was really good. I mean, I really enjoyed it. What did you think? I enjoyed it. I didn't know what to expect. And I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it kind of stuck pretty close to the trailer I saw. And I only watched the one trailer. Um, wow, you usually don't watch any trailers. I will usually watch a teaser trailer. Like the first thing they ever put out. It's yeah. like, you know, 15 seconds or whatever. It was probably like 30 seconds or something like that. Yeah. Um, but they told a lot at the very beginning. Although I thought it was like in a library in that one or not. So, so maybe they showed more of the season than they did the episode but i kind of got the idea of what had happened that he got captured by some group or something right right uh and they were more powerful than he thought of and stuff uh i didn't know it'd be like the time bureau from dc comics or i don't know which one of those came first time bureau or the the atv or eight or tva yeah the atvs know. atvs probably came after the time bureau <laughs> um but uh, anyway, um, okay, so some of the things, I wrote down some of the things that, uh, I watched it again today, actually, nice. uh, while I was working, and I wrote down some of the little things that I liked about it, or wanted to point out. Uh, first thing is, I just can't get over, and I know it's not his fault or anything, but the lighting that they have on Owen Wilson, 
is super accentuating the nose thing that he has. You know what I'm talking about? I'm yeah. not trying to like be mean or anything. It's just like I'm trying to watch it and like whatever the lighting is, like the top down lighting, it's not it's not good for his nose shape. And it was just driving me crazy when I was watching it. It's such a stupid little thing to point out for whatever reason. It, it, I don't know. I think they ought to like it better. He's even a great actor. I'm watching it. It did the same thing. Yeah. It was <laughs> almost worse because I started looking for it. Uh, I think he did a great uh, part of it. I love his part and everything. And it, I just think like, light him a little better. So I don't notice it so much. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't really. I mean, I guess I, I, I. I know him as an actor, so it didn't stand. It didn't, it wasn't something that. Well, that's what I'm saying is I know him from other stuff too. And uh, obviously he has a distinctive nose, right? Um, But uh, I've never like just stared at it. Like I did in some of those scenes. (laughs) I was like, man, the lighting that they have, because it created this really dark shadows underneath. Like I wouldn't want to be under that lighting. It would just put like black pits under my eyes or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. The lighting looked great for Loki, though. <laughs> so maybe it was all lit for him. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but that's not even something I wrote down. It's just something I can't get out of my head every time I look at it. <laughs> um, no, uh, so, okay. Uh, I I just wrote down certain favorite moments. So what if I was a robot and I didn't know it? Yep. I love... I, I, I love that the thought of him being a robot and not knowing it didn't pop into his head until someone asked him. Yeah. Right? Which it wouldn't, but just the thought of total demise. He's like, wait, make sure I'm not a robot. Yeah, he, he lives in a world confident. that that's a possibility. Yeah, he was super confident. He's like, what? You're even like, that's just dumb. Wait a minute. What if, like, that was really cool. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, he has. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, with Owen Wilson, every time someone would say, talk about him or whatever. Like the one thing that pops into my head is him just going, wow, you know, this yep. wow. And then I said that, and then we were looking like at YouTube and some, and there's like a 13 minute uh, video of just all his wows. Oh, wow. And they've added, uh, and <laughs> they've added more to it, unfortunately. It's not just wow, 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 wow. It's like they show the scene that it's in and stuff. But, just the fact that someone else thought of that, it's funny. And he does say it in Loki, too. I oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like they did the um, Samuel L. Jackson's Mother Effer. And it's in almost every movie he's done. And then right at the end, that little tag of when he beeps uh, Carol. Mm-hmm. And he's about to turn to dust and he cut it off. Yeah. Like they got that in there too, which I thought was cool. Months. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. So I love that moment. Uh, the take a ticket moment. Yeah. Right before the title sequence, where that guy is like complaining. I've seen that guy from something else, by the way. Uh, he's like, he's like somebody's some comedian's friend or something that's been in something else. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't at know. least I feel like I've seen him. But anyway, mm-hmm. a guy dissolves and he's just like tick. Yep. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love how he goes from I'm a god to oh, I'm in danger, here's submissive, to immediately back to I'm a god when he's feeling safe, to immediately submissive. Like it's just whatever works, you know, yep. whatever he can whatever he needs to be or whatever he feels he needs to be to take control of a situation. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. That's, that's him as a character, right? Like he's done that throughout his, all through the MCU and yeah. right? whatever he needs to be in that moment. That's what he is in that moment. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole animation, the miss minutes animation yep. that they show and stuff. I love that because it reminded me of like the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy animations that they used to do. Yep. Uh, whenever they talked about what was in the uh, the the guide, um, yeah, I love that whole way of explaining what was going on. Yeah, like Jurassic Park, right, with the DNA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mister, mm-hmm. what was his name? 
Mr. DNA, maybe or something like he had a name. I can't remember. Yeah, that's a good question. But yeah, um, I like that the judge and uh, Mobius had like a weird little thing going on. Yeah, two pictures of like her and Mobius behind Loki. So maybe she'll come into it more often. I don't know. I hope so because that seemed like an interesting something was going on between them, right? Yeah. Yep. There's something there. I don't know what, like there's definitely history because like they call him out a couple times, like not again, like don't do this. You know, what's going to happen. Like you've done this yeah. before. Yeah. There's definitely something going on. But he even like, like he's looking up at the, the judge and he says, I feel like I'm always looking up to you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, him sweet talking, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so something weird also is the fact that these, I guess, beings, the agents or whatever and stuff, they don't seem to have real lives. They're not. Are they real beings? Because that, that guy, Casey, yep. said he's lived his whole life behind a desk. That's why he doesn't know what fish is. Yeah. What's a fish? What? Yeah. How do you not know what a fish is? Yeah. Um, like Loki's trying to be as scary as possible. And the guy's like, I don't know. Is that bad? What's yeah. Um, I love that character. Yeah. By the way. Um, but it's it's a little weird that all of these beings they they only have one purpose, and it makes them. It seems like they should be kind of two dimensional, but yet they still feel like there's something more to them. Like I said, even like between the judge and him and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, but even the, the guard in the beginning that's telling him to take a ticket or the the shorter fellow that's telling him to go through and he's like, what if, what if, and he's like, you're just going to die if you're a robot. Like it checks, like even he's just like, just go through, man. Like just go, just take a ticket. They're all so frustrated. It's so it's, funny. Yeah, it's so DMV, uh. like bureaucratic. The, oh, and the guy that was like, Sign here to acknowledge that this is everything you've ever said. And he's like, what? And starts printing out a piece of paper and puts the what on top. Yeah, and he's in like a what? Like a four by four yeah. room just all sitting. He does? Like that's all he does. That's his whole life? Yep. Yep, yep. Like when they show outside and show that whole city or, well, even more than that, I guess. But it goes on forever and stuff. You think, okay, maybe they have apartments and they go out there and stuff. I'm not so sure if you've never seen a fish, if you've spent your whole life behind a desk. Yeah. Like this isn't the enterprise. They're not meeting at the bar to have a drink after hours. Like they're right. just. Maybe. They go I don't know. That's the impression I get anyway. Well, the infinity stones, right? Like even that moment where like, Oh, we have a ton of them. Like they even use them for like paperweights and Loki's just like, what? That was like, that was a key moment, right? That was to let him know he's lost. He's not getting out of there. Sure. He yeah. Up to that moment, he had plans and he thought he was going to get this and then do this, you know, all this stuff. And and then the minute he sees that, he's like, oh, I'm not even in the same universe as what these people are. Yep. This isn't, I don't even understand what's going on. I have to get out of that mode. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then he kind of goes back to, I'm no longer like a god, but just, yeah, whatever kind of feel, you know? Mm -hmm. so i don't know it's it's uh the first time i watched it i thought oh that was fun i enjoyed it i laughed at parts and stuff the second time i watched it i was looking for a little more uh i guess a little more depth and and finding it by the way like more depth in the and what was going on what they were saying and stuff like um I thought this was weird. So uh, I'm not going to even say spoiler because the whole thing's spoiler, right? No, nope, but... you're still in the middle. <laughs> but, well, um, if you're watching this and we spoil something, it's totally on you. <laughs> when uh, when Owen Wilson point or Mobius points to um, the the devil or the little kid points to the devil, you know, yep. uh, stained glass window or whatever, yep. um, I immediately thought Loki. Really? Because of the, I, I didn't think um, Orius or anything like, or um, Mephisto. Uh, Mephisto, right. Huh. Uh, because the horns were going 
out like that, I thought, okay, this is some, I already know I'm dealing with time hmm. and different multiverse or something like that. This is some other version of Loki. Like it just popped in my head. It was the first thing that popped in my head. I didn't go, oh, Mephisto. No, no, it's probably this. Like I, I try not to do that, right? I try not to think about what it'll be. This is the first thing that popped in my head. Um, but later on, I wrote down like Mobius tells Loki, I specialize in dangerous variants. And Loki's like, oh, like me? It's like, no, no, not like you. You're just a pussycat. Right, like, right, right. Oh, you're funny. So, but yes, like him, if he's the variant that he's hunting at the end, right? Right. So why does he look at this Loki as such a, like, lighter, not threatening thing? Because he's seen the other one and what it's done. And if Loki's biggest thing is the Chitauri invasion on New York, right, where it almost destroyed the world, that means that this variant is so massively bad. <laughs> if that, because all he is, I mean, he's he's caused mischief wherever he goes, right? And he bounces back and forth. He kind of redeemed himself by the end of his story arc in the MCU, right? Up until now, so like, I mean, I guess if you're comparing the two. This Loki's a pussycat. This other one is just bonkers crazy. Yeah, and I guess because he is creating those branches, right? I guess they see that as so much more dangerous than anything he does in the approved timeline right. uh, of what's going on. He can do whatever he wants as long as he doesn't mess up their timeline. Right. Um, so right. That and I think that's sense. one of the most massive moments in the story so far is when he watches what he doesn't know. We all know what happened and then he watches it, right? His mother and then him. And he just sees this, this Holy shit. Like what? And none of it. It's almost like that. Oh yeah. We know about that, but this, he doesn't know about that. Yeah. Uh, and great work on their part. Like they show the mother part. He reacts Yep. But then he gets to escape. Yep. And stuff. So you're like, oh, he's not going to get to see all this other stuff. And yep. then when he gets back, he starts seeing the other stuff. And you're like, oh, man, because you wanted to see him see that. I was just talking to my brother um, yesterday or the day before about um, about whenever you watch shows and they do this thing where, like, uh, this person's been keeping a secret the whole show. And their girlfriend never knew or whatever it was. And then the girlfriend finds out and right. they goes oh, and it cuts the commercial. And you're like, okay, when we come back, I'll get to see her ask all the questions that she should be asking and all that. But then they just cut to like two hours later and she's just like, okay, well, I'm going to bed or something mm -hmm. all bad and stuff. And you're like, wait, what happened? I wanted to see that moment. Mm -hmm. They always skip over those moments and here I was afraid they were going to do the same thing, but instead you got to see his reaction. Yep. And maybe they skip over the moments because they don't have good enough actors to really portray what that would be because for he showed his acting chops in that moment where he yep. starts watching yep. not only his death, right, but also he and his brother talking, like his brother talking about how like he was disappointed Yep. Kind of in him because he thought we'd fight together forever and all that. Stuff. And then his father died. Yeah, I mean, yep. it was such like a, could you imagine seeing your future in big moments like that? That acting was just amazing. Yeah, I thought, I'm the same with you. I thought they were going to cut that, right? I thought he'd get interrupted. They'd find him back in the thing. They'd stop the movie or rewind him just when he was about to see like like you want to see him have that moment and they're not going to give it to you and they let it ride out which i thought was unexpected right so you want to see you want to see him see that but i thought what they would do is cut it and it was unexpected that they didn't cut it like they started off with he's going to see this happen you know everything now he's going to know everything it's like oh my god that was so cool yeah i always feel like the writers are thinking well, everybody else all knows that. They don't want us to just go over what they already know. Yes, we do. We want the reaction video yep. of Loki. <laughs> we want to see what he thinks 
about his ending and his all the stuff to come. Yeah. Uh, I was so happy they showed that. It was like yeah. the biggest moment of that whole show, really. So uh, great. Yep. And then, of course, such a huge change where he realizes the words that, or maybe he's always known, but not really faced it, but the words that he told the humans, how uh, freedom is a, a, you know, a lie and all this stuff and like, or an illusion that you tell yourself to control and all this stuff. And yeah. he realizes that really that's what he's doing is portraying this powerful yep. villainous being because he's actually filling out a control. It's such good character work. Yeah. There were some moments that stood out and I don't know if it was because of COVID and they had to film other things outside of what was going on, but there were some moments where acting wise, like he was reacting and you could tell there was nothing else going on. Like it was just a, I'd stand there and they go like, all right, action. And then he was like, ah, and just did a thing. And it was like, it felt so disjointed and random. Whereas almost as if they added it or they had to film it outside because they cut production. There were just a couple moments where it was like, Oh really? Yeah. I'd be interested to see what that is. Uh, uh, look at it and let me know. Uh, Cause I, I didn't notice those. I'm not saying they didn't exist, but I didn't notice it. Are you talking about like whenever he's by himself and like the the robot is doing taking off his clothes or something? Or no, no, because that that was that was clever, right? This is Asgardian leather, and it just burns it off him, and he's just like, Meh. that was fine. But there was a moment where uh, I want to say there was a guard or two on either side of him, and it was just this random reaction to whatever was going on to his left that just seemed huh. displaced. I don't know. It, it, it broke, it broke me from the, from the story just to be like, I wonder if they filmed that after because it just didn't seem the same. But other than that, I think from front to back, it was, I didn't expect much. I didn't know what to expect, how the story was going to be told, what was going to happen and it just, it delivered. It was really clever. Here's a question for you. How did you feel, or it seemed out of nowhere and for no reason that they brought up Phil Coulson? Yeah. Um, I mean, like it fit. I'm not saying it yeah. felt weird or anything, but it, I thought story structure-wise, all that, the points they're trying to make, it didn't really need to be made. And I was like, uh, I wonder... I wonder if they're going to do something with that. Like if they pull full Phil Coulson in, even if it's just like a, you know, like a little brief thing, that'd be so awesome. Well, I think the, the fun part about this series is that everything's on the table, right? Kind of like with Endgame where they went back in time to find the infinity stones. Like they could do anything they want now because they could potentially go anywhere in time. So, I mean, they can go back to Tony's father they can go back to anything they want, um, which I think is cool. But I think the introduction of Phil in that situation was to show, like, Loki killed him. Like, he brings pain right. to all these different things. And there haven't, there's been a few moments, I'm sure, many moments off screen, but there's only been a few moments on screen where he actually caused something that catastrophic. And that was one of them. Yeah. That him was one of his most villainous moments. But, he set up the frost giants to to kill his father to make him look good. So his killing of the frost giants was set up anyway. But his killing of Phil, like this innocent that he at his hands did, like that was I thought that was I don't know if it was misplaced. I think it was it was there to show that point. If I mean, they're using it as a little Easter egg and something's gonna come, that's even better. But at its root, I think it was very clever to bring him in at that point because that was at Loki's hands. He did that to that guy. And then the point was it brought the Avengers together. Like, look what you did. Even that you failed. Like, you did this, and you failed because look at what it did. Like, it was a great point. Huh. Yeah, that's a good point. And interesting that he didn't say that you also failed to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. Oh, Yeah. 
I don't know. Do they consider that not part of the MCU? No, they do. But in Agents of Shield, in Shield, he's um not a replicant, but he's not no. Phil anymore. No, no, he is in the first season. He is after Loki kills him. Yeah, they How just have a way to bring him back. But it's him. I mean, there's several versions. Of, I mean, we're getting into spoilers for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for people who haven't seen it, but at episode one, uh, spoiler, really. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's him in the first season. How do they... And, and probably a few seasons after that. I don't know when things change, but... How do they answer that? They use, like, alien technology, alien blood or something like that. And, oh, okay. Yeah. There's like a moment that they show where there's like little robot things messing with his brain, waking him back up, and, and they're pumping blue blood into him. And, uh, you know, they're basically using alien tech to bring him back. And okay. Some side effects, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, just just a couple. Okay. Yeah, yeah that is interesting. They don't, they don't mention that he killed him or yeah. he didn't kill him. Right, until there's time travel going on in uh, um, Agents of yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. uh, I think they're in the same timeline as the MCU. Yeah, you know? they they kind of dance, right? The timeline goes... Winter yeah. Soldier and them definitely mm -hmm. do, where they had to react to S.H.I.E.L.D. closing down and all that stuff. Yep. So, huh. yeah. But, anyway, I, I thought that was interesting that they pointed it out. Uh, you're right, though. It is, it is the most emotionally villainous thing he does in the movie. Like, we don't even care that much that he's popping some dude's eyeball out. Right? Right. <laughs> Liberator of eyeballs. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> like Owen Wilson said. Yeah. But, um, I uh, The D.B. Cooper thing was great. Oh, yeah. Yep. But kind of weird and out, out of nowhere. It's almost like someone is a fan of that mystery of whatever happened to that guy that jumped out of the plane and nobody knows and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I did think that there was a little bit of, cause I think, what was that in the sixties or something, whenever that really happened. Yeah. Um, it's weird that Loki said I was young, blah, blah, blah. Cause that's only like 50 years from this point and, and his span like thousands of years. Right. Yeah. He was really young. Sure, sure. Of course, he's a liar too. You could always just, <laughs> just sure. He's him. just blaming him the fact that he was young on it. Yeah. Um, but he hmm. wasn't that young. So no, no, no. I mean, if you look at some of the the uh, um, early pictures of Loki, like in Thor and in Avengers, man, he looks he looks young. Oh yeah. Well, they were showing uh, whenever he was talking to the people in Germany. Yeah. You know, with the helmet and stuff. And I thought, yeah, the face looks a little thinner. Oh, he, he looked like a teenager. On. Yeah, he looked like a teenager at that point. Yeah. Compared to what he is now, right, in that jumpsuit with the with the dog collar, like, and then you throw back to him in Germany doing that whole thing. He looked like, it looked like Loki's kid at that point. It is weird that, so, like, the thing took off all his clothes and he fell. And I guess like clothes got put on him like Batman style, right? Where you go yep. down the floor. Uh, but when he lands, I noticed his, he had like the one jump suit on, but there's some kind of button up collared shirt underneath. And he has the collar on the outside of it. I don't know if you remember what that uh, looks like. Uh, I think I have a picture of it actually. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh no, that's, He's not wearing it there, but but yeah, he, he's wearing the collar on the outside. I'm like, why would they care about <laughs> making it look all cool with the collar on the outside and stuff just dropping up there? I don't know. Hmm. Um, on that. Just, you know, something silly, but sure. um, there was something that was interesting uh, that Mobius said when he was showing Loki the death of his mom. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, you're making this up. And he's like, no, this happens. It's going to happen. It happens again and again and again and again. And I thought, does it? Is time just the one big loop to them? Mm. Like, is it some kind of infinite 
thing that they revisit constantly? Because to say that it happens again and again and again and again, I don't know. That's weird. That's weird terminology, right? Yeah, I don't know if it didn't come across, and I got to watch it again. It didn't come across as if he was talking about his mother dying over and over. It seemed as if he was commenting on Loki fucking things up over and over. Well, at that moment, he was telling Loki, no, this does happen. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen again because this is the approved timeline. It'll happen again and again and again forever. Kind of. Yeah. I gotta watch it again. I I implied that it was about it was Mobius telling him that he's just gonna he's gonna do things like this over and over again. I didn't I didn't take it as if his mother like and maybe Mobius has been watching him right, so he knows Loki, and maybe it just no matter what happens, even with like the end game jump and stuff, it's gonna always happen. I didn't take it as that. I took it as Loki is just this is what Loki is, and Loki does this over and over again. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it again and again. Again and again and again. And again. And again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch it before Wednesday's show leading in. Oh, cool. I really enjoyed watching. I don't know if you watched that Legend. I think it's Legends. The little seven-minute, like, how we got here kind of stuff that they have on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, looks like uh, she took it the same way. So maybe I just read it the uh, wrong way. Maybe. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, the Legends thing where they show behind the scenes? Stuff? No, Are no, no. The how we got here. Oh. I don't think I've I don't know if it's called Legends, but it's on Disney Plus. They've done it for every before every show. They did Wanda and Vision, mm-hmm. and they did Bucky, and they did um, Falcon, and they did Agent Thirteen. Well, I keep forgetting she's going to be Agent Thirteen. Uh, um, Carter, Sharon, yeah. Sharon. They do a little like six to seven minute like let's let's catch up like let's see where they've come from. And watching the Tesseract and watching Loki's like how they got here kind of stuff was really fun. Like to see the back and forth with the brother and the mother and the frost giants and like all the stuff that Loki's kind of done up until this point. It it was cool to watch leading into the show. Um, So I'll watch the next, I'll watch the first episode leading into the next episode and see. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. I'll go back and watch it. I mean, I remember pretty much all of that, I believe, but, um, but like, for instance, whenever he said, you think you're sending them up to go to your brother Thor, but you're really sending them up to kill your mother kind of thing, right? I right. thought he was sending them to the treasure room. Yeah, they they were. But the, the whole point of that was to he was setting himself up to save his father. Okay. Like he was sending them in, like I'll I'll give you the treasures, I'll give you everything, and this is where my father is going to be. And then the whole point was to be the savior. He's going to save the father. So at that moment, that's when he turns on the on the frost giants to make himself look better in his mother's eyes, in his father's eyes, in his brother's eyes, in Asgard's eyes, like however wherever he wanted to take it. But that's that's kind of where he was he was going with it. Yeah, I'm excited with the series though. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling compared to the first episode you saw of One Division and the first episode you saw of Falcon? I think they're staying true to what the MCU is with all of their titles. It's a different feeling, right? You got your heist movies. You got your you, it, everything feels different. The the One Division was just a, after the first episode was like, what am I? What what did I just see? I don't even know. I don't even. It's like when you left Infinity War. When you left that movie, you were like, what did I just watch? I don't even, I remember being in the car, driving home. I didn't even know what to say. Why did they kill like, everything I love? Yeah. Oh my God. It was, it was such an, a, a, dr- a dramatic end and you didn't see it coming. So like watching WandaVision, I didn't know what the hell I was watching, but it felt completely different. Falcon and, and Winter Soldier or Cap and Winter Soldier, however you want to call it now. Um, that felt like like an action movie from the start. Like that's going to be your, your MCU action film. The WandaVision was just, you're, you're talking about like just a mind trip of what is even going on. And now this, I, I don't, it's going to be another mystery show, but not in the realm of WandaVision. It's just going to be a, we're going to give you some stuff. Like you think, you know what happened, but look at this. 
like behind the curtain kind of stuff. Yeah, this almost feels like the same kind of realm as like Lost and, uh, you know, like mm. don't really know what's going on. Uh, hopefully it ends better than Lost, but um, <laughs> or has better planning ahead of time, right? Sure. Um, but it it feels like there's so much, like you're just starting to scratch the surface of what's going on, right? Sure. Well, we're also at the mercy of them too, right? Like, I'm surprised that you you initially thought of Loki when the kid pointed at the devil, hmm. especially coming after WandaVision, where there were all those crazy rumors about Mephisto this, Mephisto that. Look at the wallpaper. Look at the hex. Look at this. Look at like, all right. Well, now we actually have this picture of a devil, which is kind of clever in in the MCU's eyes. Like, look at what look at the rumors that we all spread as fans during WandaVision. Now we're going to physically point at a devil, but it's not going to be the devil. Like, we're going to show it to you, and it's not going to be the thing that we're even pointing at. Yeah, I don't know why my brain just went right to that. Um, yeah, the horns. I, yeah. Loki has those big yellow. Right. Like, I think had the picture had horns going out to the side like this, I wouldn't have even gone into my head. But the fact that they were coming out the front, which I know I've seen that in Devils and stuff too, but the fact that they were just in that same shape, my I think like my brain went to the silhouette of Loki and saw that. Sure. Looking at it a second time, I think the the robes or the cloths, whatever the devil was wearing in that green and had like a gold shimmer, and there's that green and gold that you know Loki for. You mean at the end where he's like killing people with the lantern, burning them and stuff? No, the, the, the stained glass in the window. Oh, I thought the stained glass in the window was um it was he, he was wearing was he wearing gold and green? Not not this kind of green and, and, and that kind of gold, oh, but okay. it looked I don't like, remember the colors that he was wearing. I wonder if you can find a picture of it. And what's with the bubble gum? Yeah, the kablooey. <laughs> yeah. Like why? Because you know Loki purposefully gave that gun to that kid knowing he would meet them or, or something like that, right? You know there's some – he's doing something to trap them or – because, I mean, you got to keep him – Loki, even the fairly good one that we know, the pussycat version um, that we know, doesn't just kill people for no reason kind of thing, right? Sure, yeah. He doesn't just set traps for a few troops to show up and kill them, and then that's it. Yep. He's like doing something to create another. I think in the end, or my guess is he's going to create all these multiverses, right? And that will lead into the Doctor Strange thing and the uh, even the Spider-Man thing. Sure. Um. So, I don't know. We'll see. Are you looking up the picture? I am, but you know, you got my, the, I'm searching Google face. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that it's just going to kill my internet. Just look up, go to share your screen. Do you do this? Yeah, yeah. I, do this I, I, pull, I pulled it up uh, earlier because I almost put it on our thumbnail instead, but I didn't want to have like a spoiler thing on there. Sure. So sure. I just use an image that they've been using in the marketing. Um, look up Loki devil stained glass. So you don't have to put in uh, stained glass to find it. Um, yep, here it is. So let me share my so everybody can see. You're right, he was wearing green. Yep, uh, but I didn't see it until the second time we, we looked at it. The first time I focused on the head, and it was like Mephisto like, that's what they're gonna do. This is how they're gonna bring in the devil. And all those rumors we thought of WandaVision were just going to be sidestepping it and it's going to be here and someone screwed it up somewhere, but the MCU is going to deliver on it this way. And then the second time we looked at it, I don't know if they kind of zoomed in the second time and I was like, whoa, whoa, golden green. Like, look at what he's wearing is like the garbs. And he points it out in the beginning of the, the, the show. This is Asgardian leather. So you're looking at what he's wearing and then you're looking at this going, well, yeah, that looks... Well I didn't even expect that this is an image of what attacked him as much as like the kid saw the horns and just pointed to, Oh, it's like the devil. And there's a representation of the devil. Like I, I didn't think like this uh, stained window was supposed to really represent the being that came and 
destroyed things, you know. But I, I think they're slipping the green and stuff in there for fun, maybe. Maybe. Um, I mean, I also, at the end, I didn't see the the cloaked figure from the 1600s or whenever we. I didn't see anything coming out from the hood or yeah. under the hood. So he didn't have he didn't have the horns on when he had the hood. Yeah. And I, I think that's just because they wanted he wanted them to like start approaching him. So if you have the horns, they know exactly who they're dealing with. I guess. Sure. I mean they they didn't back down when they first met Loki in the beginning of the show either. Like they were. All right, this is your last chance. Like, they yeah, but they might go like, "Oh my God, he's here!" and like bring in more people and so you know back up all that. They were just like, "Oh, it's some dude with a lantern. Let's go check it out." You know. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So and kind of weird that he takes them out using old knowledge. Yeah. Like you know, like fire from a lantern. If he's able to bounce around in time and stuff like that, here let me get this off the screen. Well, uh, he did. He did with the the gum, right? Like that's not right. sixteen hundred France, right? Like he's obviously, France. yeah, he's obviously able to bounce around mm -hmm. uh, time and stuff. So he could have just had, you know, a bazooka or something. Like, sure. How weird is it that he and, and whatever they came to look at that. Do you know what that staff was that had the circle? Because it looks vaguely familiar. It does, and I didn't want to go down the rabbit hole and trying to figure it out. I figured they'll tell us what that is, but that's yeah. definitely there's something there. It looks familiar. Maybe I'm just thinking of like the Inquisitor's lightsaber from yeah. from Clone Wars. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, the um, the staff that was in there or whatever clearly from something that shouldn't be there. I think they said what it was, third millennial or whatever. Um, yeah, I missed that part. So, uh, yeah, when they scanned it. Yeah. Um, so so he can clearly bring laser guns or something. Mm -hmm. So why, I don't know, dramatic effect. We know he's dramatic. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's more about the show than it is about the impact, right? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. And, um, there's something about that gum. Not only the name of it being Kablooey, which implies something is going to get blown up, but the fact that it's turning blue. the person blue. Oh, you mean like Loki is the blue? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't understand. I didn't really get a good look at the the image that's on the what would be the right side of the pack, right? There's like a, there's a face there. And I don't know if that looks like a frost giant or if it looks like something that has nothing to do with the MCU, but I figured there's something with the blue. Yeah. I'm looking for a picture of it. Cause what we see of Loki, Loki is still, I mean, he's got that, that the human skin, right? He doesn't have the frost giant skin. And I don't know if that ever he's have it. If he wants it though. Remember, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was Thor 2 that he could like mm -hmm. change his skin or something like that. Yeah, and that didn't go away, right? Like that wasn't sucked out of him or anything. Right. So I wonder why. <laughs> Blueberry. Yeah. A bluey. And you, yeah, and whatever this weird face is. Right, it looks like it could be some sort of an elf. The ears, yeah. I don't How know. Old is Owen Wilson? Look at his hands. <laughs> I don't mean, I don't mean to pile on Owen Wilson at all. Yeah, I'm last week you're shitting on oh, this week you're shitting on Owen Wilson. What the hell? I know. I don't mean to be mean at all. I, I was just, I guess I don't think of him as being old. Let me. I'm looking him up now. I don't, <laughs> this is why people hover on the Discord because they want to make sure you're not talking shit about them. Well. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, I'm trying to see how old he is here. I thought the gray that they put in his hair was, or that they put it in his hair, because I didn't think he was that old. Yeah, maybe they're trying to make him look older. Yeah, you know, a little wiser, a little. Yeah. Um, maybe he has gray hair. hair. That's what? fine. He can have gray hair. He's 52. Oh, wow. I didn't expect him to be that old. Uh, 52 is not old. <laughs> I don't mean that old. I just mean I didn't expect him that 
age, right? Sure, 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 sure. I thought maybe, I don't know, I guess 45, 48. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, can you zoom in anymore or no? Does it get too, too grainy? Uh, I mean, uh, yep. There we go. So it's weird that it's nine units, not nine pieces. Maybe that's a European thing or something. Maybe like blueberry is definitely it's 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 spelled differently twice, right? Not only blue but berry. Yeah, I I mean this could be just totally random. This might just be a thing to let you know that there's some time jump stuff going on. But I like the idea of the blue. You know, the hidden blue beneath and stuff. That's interesting. What does it say up top above Kablooey? Can you make it out? Yeah. No, I can't read it. I tried earlier. I just did a Google search for, I just typed in gum and Loki and got that. So. And no one no one has figured out what it says up on top there? I don't know. I haven't searched for all that. Huh. I wonder what that says. Probably just some silly slogan, I'm sure. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I'm not really sure. It would be interesting to know because I know that like uh, des uh, designers and prop designers and stuff like that slip in fun little things mm -hmm. in behind like in Star Trek, all of the behind in the bridge, there's always a plaque that's supposed to be there from like the shipyard that builds it or whatever. But they always have like, uh, you know, like the people who actually built the set named on there and Mm. Uh, f they throw in funny names and stuff on it because you never get close enough to read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, internal. Yeah, kind of like how I try and stage this a little bit for our show. <laughs> right. You always say that, and then I never really look at what you got behind you. Yeah, it's all right. Don't, don't go back. No, no, no. no. We're gonna see your stage now. So you got your five tribes up. Yep. Yeah. You got uh, what's the one next to it? Rocks on the rocks. Yep. Yep. Holy, of course. Yep. Got your Batman animated Batman. Yep. Nice. That's uh, the that's the signed instruction book. No, I'm lying. That's the signed instruction book. <laughs> this is the actual game. That's the Kevin Conroy signed instruction book. Cool. This is the prototype of what it was prior to Batman. This is our initial uh, Avengers. Uh, themed game. Nice. Someday you'll have our game back there. Yeah, eventually. That'll happen. I almost hit end broadcast. That would be great. <laughs> Shortest episode ever, guys. Um, well, all right. So we've talked almost as long as the actual episode of Loki. Yeah. About Loki. I so I think we can move on unless you have something more to add. No, I can move Loki out of the way now so his straw's not up my nose in the episode. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Um, well, for now. Uh, who knows? Maybe next episode we'll see what happens. It, it might be like so amazing. We're going to dive into it a little bit more. Probably. I like that we give people a few days to watch it, though. You know, it, yeah. it seems like my YouTube video gets filled to the brim with, uh, you know, my reactions to Loki and all this stuff like that day. Yeah, sure. I know, I know they want to get looked at. They want to, you know, all that stuff. But and you got to just ignore all that stuff until you see the episode. So, what do you think about it being on Wednesday? This is non-spoilery. This is just personal opinion because everything so far has been Friday. You got the weekend. We talk about it on Monday, maybe. Now you got it on Wednesday. Yeah, I know that's weird. Um, they had. Uh... Well, Bad Batch is on Fridays as well, right? So maybe they just don't want to overlap. Maybe, because they had moved Loki up. It was initially the 11th, which was Friday, and then there was that whole thing, Loki has been moved. And they're like, oh, wow, this is going to be great. We're going to get it next week. And it was like, no, just two days. Like, ah, whatever. That's right. I remember they did do that. Yep, yep. So maybe it's a Bad Batch thing. I thought Bad, Bat Bad Batch is on Friday. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe it's Sunday. I don't know. I don't watch it the day of because there's not a ton of spoilers, so I don't have to worry about it, right? Right, right. Um, usually I just go, oh, I've got some, a little bit of time, and I watch whatever the next week's one is. Sure. Really good, though. I have been enjoying it. I know you're not watching it yet because you haven't caught up to 
uh, you're still in Rebels, right? Still getting through Rebels, yep. Yeah. Now, are we, are we going to jump into this right here? You can, yeah. Since we seem to be jumping into that. Um, I, I knew we were going to talk about Star Wars because we always do, so I just have a banner there to talk about it. Um, no, I was just... You led with Star curious. Wars. I you did. led with a musical Star Wars with Jack Black. You led with Mando dying and Jar Jar taking the armor. So you 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 you, you, you make it sound like I want those things to happen. I think internally you do. No, I, I just want. want I, think I just you wanted want to see Jack your Black. angst at having to pick them. <laughs> what about Jack Black as a Muppet, Jar Jar, taking over Mando in a musical? That's almost better oh. than <laughs> than anything else. Oh my god, that sounds horrible. Now I want Jack Black in Mandalorian. As a Muppet playing No 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 no, not as a Muppet and stuff, but just as like a I just like if he was just some alien or something off to the side. Oh, that'd be so great. I'd love it. Just to, well, just to he let comes you in as like Porkins or <laughs> Wexley. He doesn't have to take over someone else's role. He could just be some guy that gets questioned or something like oh, that. Yes. I guess. I don't know why you dislike him so much. I'll put together a reel of Jack Black um, movies. <laughs> or I mean, he, he definitely yeah, doesn't. Like We're going to Star Wars. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you're the one that brought back Jack Black. Jack Black. Jack, Jack Black. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so where are you in Star Wars? Uh, I, uh, watching Rebels second season? <sighs> um, they all kind of blend, right? Because you just watch. They don't really tell you like end of season one. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I I don't want to also ruin it for anybody. Right. No, we've done enough spoiling of su stuff today. So yeah. yeah, I was just curious. Uh, I would know where you were depending on your enthusiasm, I would imagine, because things just get better and better and better and better. Yeah, I, I think I'm still on the other side of the fence with the animation because Clone Wars just had so much of an impact for watching it for the first time. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not not enjoying it. I still think the story is great. Um, I I appreciate what they're. I actually one of the one of the coolest thing. All right, I'm going to talk about something. That's spoilery if you haven't watched Rebels. So move along for a second um, while he's 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 over here. Okay. And I'm talking about it now. <clears throat> so when Ezra goes into the cave for the trial to get the Kyber crystal. Yeah. And you hear Yoda. Yeah. You immediately know that that's not the guy that's been playing Yoda in Clone Wars. You know that that's Frank Oz. Uh... I don't know. I saw it so separately, so far apart from each other. I didn't notice that. So whoever does it in, and I forget his name, but whoever does it in, um, and Clone I picked Wars. up on this with Jar Jar too, like the first time you meet Jar Jar in Clone Wars, it's not the same actor. And you go, you fast forward like three episodes and they bring the actor back and he's he's Jar Jar, but he still does it well. Like that's the, that's the way the character should talk and should react and his mannerisms are spot on. Whoever does Yoda in Clone Wars is good. You get Yoda's voice. You get his mannerisms. You you understand that that's Yoda. But there's just something that's not Yoda. And in Rebels, when you hear Yoda, which I don't understand, because at this point in Rebels, Yoda's not dead. Right. So how is he there talking in spirit form? But you know that that's not the same voice actor that was in Clone Wars. And it's got that Frank Oz feel to it to like, I needed to see the credits at the end. And sure enough, it was Frank Oz. So the whole episode stood out to be like, that was awesome. But I don't under, it's one of the more confusing ones because I don't understand why Yoda is there as a spirit, like, like the, um, the emotions from his trial at the end of Clone Wars, those masks, right. That are all spirit, like these little orbs that are going around. Why is that him when he's not, we haven't gone through, him giving himself up for the force yet. So I don't understand where that line is, but man, getting Frank Oz back to do it was so far my highlight of the show. Hmm. So I don't know <laughs> if I should put this down now. Yeah. Spoiler, spoiler. Good. Uh, you can put that down. 
Okay. Um, you are way more observant of voices than I am, though. Apparently. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've noticed uh, uh, Aaron does the same thing. She'll be like, oh, I know that voice whenever animation and stuff we're watching. She'll go, it's this person. And I'm like, oh, you're right. It, it, like, I just don't. I, I I guess I'm more involved in, like, the story or something. Like, I'm just not paying attention to it. Uh. Yeah, there was just as soon as you heard. I mean, it's it's such a cool moment to begin with, where you're like, "Oh, cool," but then it was like, "Wait a minute, that's not. It doesn't sound right." Well, you also just watched Clone Wars and Rebels. I had quite a bit of distance between them, right? Okay, right. So, yeah. Like I get. So I thought initially that it was just a fast forward in time, right? Like Clone Wars happened, although people don't age the same. And I just thought it was like, all right, here's Clone Wars, and here we are in Rebels. So sure, your voice is going to sound a little bit different. But the actor, like the way that he was saying the words that were on screen were not the same. It wasn't this, It wasn't just, I'm going to talk a little more raspy because now I'm 50 years older. It was just, it was like, no, this is a different person. And it was like everything that you remember from hearing him in the first place was just, it was super Now cool. I want to go back and watch it. Again, <laughs> just watch two episodes, right? Watch the end of Clone Wars, and yeah. then watch that episode, and you'll see right away the difference. I did just recently watch the Clone Wars stuff with uh, Yoda in it, oh. uh, uh, just because we were talking about it. And sometimes just go back and watch that stuff, right? So cool, so cool. Um, the do you know when the Obi Wan stuff, Obi Wan uh, story is coming? Um. The Disney Plus show? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I didn't know if they've announced it yet or not. I thought it was this year, though. I Maybe thought it was, there was that rumor with the trailer, but it wasn't a trailer. Oh. And then... That's been out for a long time, but it, it got some reassert... Uh, it reassert... Uh, it did. But I guess Disney released, or some, some set photos have come out from the OB set. So I haven't looked at them. Yeah, and, and I don't want to see anything really because I don't see it. But uh, I was guilty of clicking on the official, you know, Obi Wan trailer whenever it was like a year and a half ago, and I was like, okay, I'll watch a quick little thing. And immediately I was like, no, nope. okay, showing old stuff, mm -hmm. and then they're showing stuff from other movies now. And then the Star oh. Destroyer was like floating, like it just all looked just weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not complaining that it was awfully made. I'm complaining that they put the word official on there. Right. They should be right. taken off of YouTube for doing that. Yep. Or the video should be taken off. Of it. But they should at least be penalized for wrongfully, you know, making people watch that stuff. So. Yeah, put a fan trailer or put put some something that's letting people know it's not official. I mean, it's clickbait, right? Sure. Next week, the full 42 official OB release. <laughs> Right? That should just be the title of every episode now. Official. Now the real new. If it, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I mean, if all you care about is getting clicks, then sure. Well, I'm not even watching that. Yep. Two different. Um, let's see. How far is Rebels into... So Rebels must be about... I want to say maybe 16 years? After Clone Wars, Sound yeah, right? Rebels happens in between four and five, right? No, it happens in between. It happens right before Rogue One, really, like a couple of years before Rogue One. Oh, so that even furthers my question of how the hell <laughs> I thought four and five, and maybe there was like this this. All right, maybe it's overlapping five a little bit. Like I get like the end of Clone Wars, like the way that they oh. I think I immediately text you, like, wait a minute, this doesn't no. make sense. the timeline. Yeah. There's not even like a fully formed rebellion yet. Right. This is still like you can see it in Sabine's thing. Like there's the rebel, but it's the Phoenix. Like I get it. Right. But I thought I thought it was happening later. It's even happening earlier than I thought, which now furthers the question how, why, and what the hell. I don't know, uh, recording of, sort of. Mm. Hey, Jedi recording. He no. was the one that kind of ran those trials and stuff. 
Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm sure I'll get my answer. Or will I not? And it's all just up to you to speculate. <laughs> uh, I have to rewatch it. I don't remember. I remember the incident you're talking about, but I don't remember much more than that. Okay. I liked it. I just, it threw up the question. Same thing when I was watching Clone Wars and there's a moment Hit pause, text Chris, wait a minute, something's wrong, I don't understand it. And then it turned out that it was like a time jump, like a fast forward to other stuff that was going on, which made sense. This doesn't make sense. Yet, anyway. What is... Oh, Katya is showing... <laughs> Katya is showing what he looks like in uh, Rebels versus... Uh, Clone Wars to me. She sent the uh, pictures here. I could put them up. Oh, the animation is is absolutely. Let me it show. is definitely different. Yeah, so this is Clone Wars, right? Yep. Which actually, uh, I think he even changes in the Clone Wars season one to uh, mm -hmm. this is later on in Clone Wars. No, we had talked about that, right? Like the the, yeah. the few seasons in, there are moments where, like some of the space battles or some of the ships in space, like it looked like it could be a real friggin', a real, a real time, real CGI stuff. Yeah, that's just, nope. Yeah, I agree. I, I didn't like how they made him look. Here. It it doesn't even look like the same character. Yep. Portions are all off. Well, that's like going from Muppet Yoda to CGI Yoda. Yeah, it kind of looks like um, someone's first try at a 3D character, and they chose to try Yoda. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can even see, like, the hair is just, like, this stuck-on yep. thing right here. Yeah. I agree that uh, uh, Clone Wars, especially near the end, had better uh, animation, but Rebels gets better in their animation as they go as well. Sure. I don't know why, because at that point they should have should have been on top of things, <laughs> right? But, yeah, sure, um, absolutely. Um, I know there's been rumors. There's always Star Wars rumors, right? Yep. Um, and there's a rumor right now that I hate. I don't know if you ever want to hear it. Probably um, not. It's about a character coming back. Yeah. Um, that people are like, ooh, maybe they'll come back, or maybe this is a hint for this, and all this stuff, you know? Um, I don't know if you want me to say it or not. Say it. All right, so, uh, I mean, it's all over the place, but people are trying to get Mace Winder to come back. Sure, that's been for years now. Yeah, it is, but now they're like, almost every time there's a mysterious figure, is this Mace Winder? Like it's it's I'm seeing it on my news feed constantly now. The little picture of him all messed up kind of thing that some of my artists did a fan thing of, you know. Yeah. Um, I really hope they don't. I love Mace Windu as a character. He's a fascinating Jedi once you start getting into like like how he plays with the dark side but doesn't play with it. Like he's yeah. the that's why he has the purple lightsaber. Well. We know why he really has a purple lightsaber because <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson said he wanted to look, he wanted to stand out amongst all the Jedi. Right. Um, but uh, like in lore and stuff like that, it, he has it because, you know, he's, he's trained and learned himself, uh, taught himself how to kind of dance with it a little bit. You know, he's the, definitely the one that gets closest to it. Well, that's why it's purple, right? I mean, you got the blue. You, when you think about the Jedi, you think of green or blue, mostly blue. Or yellow. And then you think of the red. Or yellow, but I yellow is a specific. Well, okay, I, so there's a traditional, uh, not traditional, there's like a, 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 I actually follow this in the role-playing game that I, I run, but uh, there's like the school of thought that like uh, there's three different kind of Jedi. There's Sentinel, uh, yeah. Guardian, and Consul. Right. And so Consuls have green light sabers and they're more, diplomatic and whatnot and then the guardians have blue ones they're you know a little more pushy <laughs> a little more like knights i guess yeah. um and then the sentient uh sent did i say sentience sentinels 
You said Sentinel. Uh, oh, okay. The Sentinels, they're kind yep. of like the rogue version of Jedi or spies or stuff like that. And right. they're the ones with the yellow, right? I thought they were the protectors. They're the ones that are like in yeah. the council, uh, the, the Jedi yeah. Hall. They're the, they're the ones, the guards that have the yellow. Uh, well, they have those too. Um, but the Sentinels, uh, so like uh, the Kefar uh, character, the he has the uh, yellow tattoo that goes across his eyes. I can't remember his name now. Uh, he was with uh, 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 Obi Wan on the uh, Now Hutta. Yeah, if you remember that, um, he's a Sentinel. So he doesn't like go to the temple and all that stuff. He he lives in a certain area, and he's like the roaming. Uh, you know, like kung fu guy. You know, like you remember that show Kung Fu with uh, David. Um, I can't remember now. The Kill Bill guy. Anyway. Um, oh yeah. They they kind of roam around in that area, and the people that live there know that they have a Jedi protector that lives in the area, kind of thing. And he shows up, and he. It's like the you know the the white hat that comes in t- town that's had the bad guys messing with the town, and he saves the town kind of thing. That's what a sentinel does is they have like their own kind of region and they don't really answer to the temple that much. Um, you know, they, they kind of do their own thing. Um, but that's, that's kind of what the yellow lightsabers go to other than the, you're right. The, the security right. people. Yeah. 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 I always saw Mace as having dancing the line, like you said, but the blue and the red, right? Cause when you look at Luke and Darth, you see the blue and the red saber. Like, that's the clash, right? Obi and him, blue and red. So Mace is kind of in the middle of the, I can do this bad shit, but I'm also a Jedi. But there's that blue and the red that make purple. It was always in my head. Well, but yes, he wanted to stand out. The reason why I don't want him back is because I don't want Star Wars to become this thing where just nobody ever dies. Yeah. And it was kind of like... Mace Windu represented a kind of a, kind of like a bridge between the old Jedi, the Republic, and what's about to come. So whenever he went away, it was like that was the chopping block mm-hmm. that made Darth Vader, that made the Emperor who he was as we know him, all that stuff. That death becomes lessened if he just comes back and he's like, yeah, I've been hanging around you know, hiding from Sith or whatever, and now I'm this and that. Like, if you want to have more Mace Windu, let's see, like, young Mace Windu. I want to see that. Let's have that series. Sure, yeah. You see a little bit of it in in Clone Wars, right? They answer a lot of the story of him as a character. Yeah. In fact, let's do that. Let's get, like, uh, let's get, like, a young actor to play young Mace Windu, and I want to see that. Yeah. New series. Mackie? Anthony Mack. Is he that young now, though? I'm talking, I was thinking like, you know, like 16, 17. Right. I, I forget you think 50 is old. So. <laughs> no, I just mean like, I want to see him as a Padawan. Oh, like young, young. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see him basically like we saw Obi Wan on episode one, like just about to become a knight, mm. real young, 19, 18, 19, something like that, you know? Okay. With the Jedi With Skywalker braid. Skywalker age. Yeah. 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 With the Jedi braid, I don't know if he have a braid. I guess he'd have hair and a braid at that point. I don't know if he would or not. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if that's a like in Star Wars. I don't know if that's just a hair choice, you know, like mine is, or I don't know. Maybe his species is kind of not fully human. Maybe they don't have hair. I don't know. (laughs) It's probably just a hair choice. Maybe force not to grow it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that. Yeah, you might having to shave your head. Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> not yet. Not in a while, anyway. Wait till uh, Cuscon if I can make it. Yep. Zzz, we'll just buzz the whole thing. Did we agree on that? I don't know if that was. I thought you kind of poo pooed that. I didn't right? really ask. Mm, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. Well, yeah, yeah, perfect timing. Well done, Brett. I did not mean to uh, wear a competing uh, convention shirt uh, against yours, though. It's 
It's funny. I didn't even pick up on you it. You didn't recognize what it is? No. Oh, nice. It's the board game. It's the board game geek con shirt from like. Nice. Yeah, it's like we planned it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, 2016. Yeah. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Both in November. It's true. Um, so I did skip. I had to move our banners around a little bit because well, we were no, go back to that banner because there was there's a reason you have that up there. Is there? yeah, were you talking about like you had this better way to do the prequels or something? Oh yes. Uh, well, okay. So do you want to <laughs> you want to get into it now or is that a whole nother? What time is it? Nine forty one. I'll start it a little bit just to get you thinking about it. Maybe other people think about it. We'll talk about it another time. Sure. I was Let's thinking... How long this little bit goes? I'm going to say it goes a half an hour. I was thinking it would be a fun exercise, right? To think about what you would do with episode seven, eight, and nine. But you still have to kind of stick... Like, you got to keep some of the characters and stuff. Like, try to get... It's close to what you ha- like. If everything that J.J. Abrams had in Episode Seven, right? Let's just call that like your ingredients. Okay. How would you like arrange it? Because I was thinking, imagine if Episode Seven started off with, um, you got Luke Skywalker, right? And he's, oh, let's make him, you know, maybe yeah. ten years younger than he is in Episode at the end of Episode Seven, right? Yeah. Still age and stuff. But he has uh, younglings that he's teaching. And maybe there's even like a 16-year-old uh, Ben or a 13-year-old Ben or something like that. And he's even helping and all that stuff. And one of the littlest kids, like the smaller kids, uh, let's say like four or five years old, is Ray. She's been trained uh, for four years anyway. Like how much can you remember of that, right? Right. And they're on Jakku. That's where they're having the stuff happen. And right. then the whole bad thing with, you know, uh, Ben turning and all this stuff happens and she gets away or falls away. Somebody finds her and so on. So that first explains how she's already force sensitive uh, and that she's been a little bit trained. Maybe she's five, maybe even six, you know. But then you can cut to her, uh, you know, uh, basically scavenging and putting on the helmet and all that stuff. Um, just that little intro would be like you'd really attach to her immediately, right? Yeah. I, I think, and it would also solve the, you can't just go, I think I have the force now, holding ships in place, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. Like, you could definitely even have Luke go, this one's, like, super powerful. I don't know why, but something's going on with her, you know. Sure. You could have a previous connection between her and Ben. Like, if she's six and Ben is 16 or something, or even 13 or something like that, he can be, like, helping her or something with a little issue she had. Like, you could have the... Part of the cool thing about Star Wars is these reoccurring themes that, you know, they re, they look at the same theme but in a different light, and and they keep doing that kind of thing. And seven, eight, and nine just kind of broke that whole feeling, right? Sure. Yeah. So if you started off with them as kids and stuff, and Ben is helping her, like, no, you hold your lightsaber like this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later on at the end when they're fighting. He grabs her and she grabs a lightsaber the right way and like pulls it back. You know, you just do cool stuff like that. That so if you started the series like that, I mean the the episode like that. Sure. What's the next change that could happen or should happen and stuff? You know, just stuff to think about. I think that's where it all kind of goes off the rails, right? Because we don't necessarily know. I mean, I guess maybe we'll get the the Abrams cut later on HBO max for X amount of dollars. Um, but I don't think we necessarily know what would have happened had it not get tainted by eight. If we didn't, if, if, if we like, I'm part of the fucking thing. If they didn't include 
Johnson, who was like, yeah, you know all this stuff? <laughs> like what Luke did with the saber? Like if we, or the laser sword? If we didn't get that, then what would it look like? Like I, I, I believe they, they should have went with Ben and Ray being the siblings. Like yeah. I think maybe it's it's already out there, so maybe that's just where I wanted it to be. But I really think that that would have been a great story. It would have answered the connection, right? Why they were drawn to each other, rather than it just being this half a corpse dead guy that was controlling and manipulating everything. But so I don't know how much of nine is them just going, "Holy shit, we need to retcon all this stuff that's garbage from eight. Like, what would we have had had eight not been a Let's throw all this stuff out and forget everything we know. I think nine was what his story was supposed to be, except it had to be all messed up to cram it all in because of eight. I think from the beginning, JJ thought this is what's going to happen. It's going to be the emperor and all that. But I think in his version of eight, if that was even going to be a thing, was that the emperor was going to be teased or found then at the end. And you'd be like, oh my God, the emperor's back at the end of eight and then then you go into nine right and that would have made so much more sense and stuff mm. right i would have preferred no emperor honestly well you uh, pegged it right you said her fighting style which is spot on is his like it it looks yeah. and i'm sure that was done purposefully i think it was i i, I would, <laughs> could imagine jj slipping that in there yeah. Or the the undercut thrust and stuff that she was doing, yeah. it was weird because, um, you know, we saw her fight previously with that staff that yeah. she carries, right? And those are totally different moves. And I thought, well, maybe she'll do things whenever she gets a lightsaber. Maybe she'll do things that kind of reflect that, but yeah. they don't. Like the yeah. moves were totally untrained, but still look like his stuff. So. Uh, that's what made me think of it. Um, but I I thought that she would turn out to be his daughter, not granddaughter. Um, or some oh, kind of clone version of him that's, you know, allowed to grow normally. So it just chose female instead of male. Stuff like that. Sure, sure. They kind of set that up with the, with the Clone Wars, right? And the Bad Batch and how they were all kind of different. So maybe this could have been just a, another variation of the clone just... Do yeah, I do. Yeah, I do like that Mandalorian season two spoilers uh, has some uh, little hints towards that's what they were doing, right? Yeah, like like Gideon. I think Gideon knows that the Emperor's still alive. Really? Yeah, and that he has been ordered by Gideon by the Emperor to get these midichlorians and stuff and re, you know, and reclone him eventually all that stuff. I think that's why Gideon went to kill himself because he can't let the Jedi, he didn't even try to do anything like that until he saw a Jedi coming. Right. When he saw the Jedi coming, he looked on there and got terrified and grabbed the gun and tried to kill himself because he doesn't want them to find out that the emperor through him he knows a jedi could question his brain right like get do, do you think the emperor is half the man he used to be because something went wrong delete delete <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know it's half he could be a third i mean you really don't know what's underneath the cloak but um, give the benefit of the doubt and say he's half do you think something else happened there because there's no way that's really his is it really his body no, no, it's a clone, right? I think that's the whole point. Is that right. got, I think somehow like his evil ghost essence or something, he figured out a way to move it to something that could then talk to Gideon and others and influence him to do stuff. I mean, he can't, just from being a robot dude stuck to a thing, he can't have all those thousands and thousands of people and all those ships made without... All, you know, how does that get done? That's just yeah. Anyway, There's, if Darth Maul could get cut in half, fall down a thing, and then we see him again with some spider body that he made, how is the Emperor just chilling? That's way more plausible. 
then what the emperor the emperor is just like and i've got an entire army and 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 naval navy thing it's like that takes a lot of material and work and you got to get engineers and uh you need like spaceports and stuff to make all this stuff yep and where do you get all these people from all those troops and everything you got to recruit them yeah that's going to be found out <laughs> Someone's going to find that out. And it'd be different if it was like the First Order doing it or something. But it clearly wasn't because Kylo had no idea about it. Yeah. I still think... I need to watch it again. But I still think (laughs) that Ben is not Ben at the end of the movie. What? I think when when Ray and him fight, right, and she stabs him... And then he's healed. Right. I honestly, and again, this was on first impression. I've only seen it once because I couldn't bring myself to watch it a second time too quickly. Um, I think yeah. Leia's last thing was to help Ray out and control Ben. Kind of like Luke projected himself and he wasn't really there, but he was doing a thing. There were moments in that, that, those scenes where it seemed as if Leia was using Ben as this vessel to help Ray. But I also believe that Ray's staff is Darth Maul's saber because it looks too similar. So, I mean, in my world, it works. You mean this part right here? Yeah, it's too spot on, man. It is pretty close. And then... Uh, again spoiler loki spoiler yay um when at the end of the clone wars when that ship was crashing on that planet right i'm like it's jakku like there's maul saber it wasn't even yeah it. but it wasn't even the same yeah. type of ship totally no different. i know it wasn't but in my head everything was lighting up like oh this is it and it wasn't it that was an amazing episode though. oh my god it was great but yeah, I think because I don't remember Ben, and maybe he does, but I don't remember Ben speaking after the fight on the ship in the water, on the water, on the ship, on the water, in the water, whatever. I don't remember him speaking. Like he goes in, he fights off, he does all his amazing stuff, um, goes and helps Ray. I don't remember him speaking before he dies. Like, yeah, no. he talks to Solo. He talks to Han Solo. Does he? Yeah. She saves him. She leaves, takes his uh, vehicle, and he's like sitting there, like, "Oh crap, what's happened?" And right. That's where he sees his father. Yeah, but that could all be in his head. Like, I don't think he actually. Also, that could also but be it's in his on. head. It's him talking to his father. I gotta watch it again. Yeah, uh, I think it. I think that would defeat a lot of the idea of redemption that they were trying to put through there. Sure. Um, which, you know, Star Wars has this unfortunate, like, it's okay that he killed billions, you know, he, he's he's a good guy now, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> but, I mean, with the Force, I guess, like, legally, he's not a good guy. He still needs to go to prison or uh, whatever the penalties of that are is, but... Probably you know. loss of limb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Huh. But yeah, the uh, I think though instead it's more like I, what I thought you were gonna say is uh, like whenever Grogu heals uh, grief and mm-hmm. Mandalorian, they, he gets like a like a positive vibe about him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, like it kind of infects him with some goodness. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I think it kind of happened with Ray as well. Right. Yeah, well, and she had just learned it, right? Learned. I know, I know. Yeah, there just seemed, it, it almost, maybe it was just the way I wanted the story to go. Like, all right, Ben, Ben should have died there. Like, look at what he's done. He's been a dick the whole time. He killed massive amounts of, of people. Like, yeah, he just died on the, the, the rough waters of this crashed ship. Like, great, good for you. And then Leia did exactly what her brother did to help. Like, 
I'm going to buy you some time. I'm going to force project myself as my last thing to help you out. And ha ha, I wasn't really there the whole time. And then Leia's last thing was, I'm going to help Ray because Ray is this, like if Ray was her daughter and Ben was like, that could have been, I don't know. I think I, it was just coincident. I think she passed and her passing was felt by him so suddenly that he, Ray had that moment to kill him. Yeah. I mean, he did have an interesting moment in eight. Uh, I'll give this to Johnson. He did have an interesting moment in eight where he was about to blow up uh, where his mother was. Sure. And then he decided not to. Sure. And then some other ship shot the missiles, right? Yep. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah, just before the Skywalker moment in eight. What do you mean? She was skywalking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the murder of Akbar. The murder of Akbar. Like, he really needed to go out like that? Come on. Ah, so just much some, Just like some extra. It, yeah. it felt like Johnson didn't even know who he was. Well, he didn't know what any of the other ones were, right? Because uh, when they announced who was dead... They were like, we lost Akbar and everyone else. Like, wh who is everyone else? Like, there's been <laughs> people in that room there. Yeah. You just mentioned Akbar because he's the only one you think Make we sure know. never to be in a room with Akbar because oh. no one else will see you. Right. <laughs> it's still not the worst. The worst is Chewie and Leia passing each other. I will never forgive that. Everything else, fine. You want to throw the laser sword. He, you at, least he's agreed, you gotta at least he's agreed that that was a mistake. Sure. I, well, I, that I, was your choice, though. Like, that was... You right. You were like, that's what I'm doing. Right. You you wrote in, or maybe you didn't write in. I don't know how that works. But, like, Leia and Chewie just passing each other. Like, that I is can, unforgivable. I can... No, I can forgive stuff whenever they go, oh, I sh you're right, I should have done this and stuff. It's like, I can't forgive the last three episodes of uh, Game of Thrones because they still think they did a good job. Screw that. They destroyed a whole franchise. Anyway, this is Star Wars. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good that's a good topic for another time too. Uh, yeah, have you seen the whole series? Yeah, yeah. Starbucks coffee cup and all. <laughs> you know, I missed it whenever the episode showed up. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Uh, um, damn internet. Yep. <laughs> uh, that we're on right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I just thought it'd be interesting to every now and then talk about, okay, so let's say that's what the beginning was. Mm -hmm. We get back to her. She's stranded on Jakku. But her past is blurry to her because she was like five or six. Mm -hmm. And whoever found her didn't know all about this stuff because it was a secret academy kind of thing. Sure, sure. And she just ran away. Yeah. yeah, so she's always had a little bit of force talent, but she don't know who to tell that about and stuff. Maybe she's worried about, you know, being found out about it. And she remembers some little things. Maybe she had a book and she kind of refers to the book every now and then, along with her helmet that she has and stuff. Sure, sure. sure. By the way, did you know that the pilot helmet that she puts on and I'm, you know what scene I'm talking about, right? Yeah, right in the beginning of when we yeah. first heard going. That, to the ship. Yeah. She has an X-Wing helmet uh, in the there's words on the side of it and it says Ray. What? Yeah. It, it, if you translate the words, because it's in the Star Wars language, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you translate it, it says Ray. That's all that it says is just Ray? That's what I've seen in it. it. Well, it's a rumor, I guess. Huh. I need to translate it myself to know for certain. But I thought it was interesting because maybe she didn't even remember her actual real name and just took it from the helmet. Right, right, right. Or whatever the pilot's name was, or something. Huh, interesting. Hmm. That's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, it could have been cool if that was Darth Maul's saber, but. <laughs> so, how do you feel about talking about retconning and, and what would you do differently? Mm -hmm. Seven was Abrams. And if you take into consideration, like Abrams had this plan, right? And they screwed it up with Johnson. You just threw everything well, out. I would undo the plan because, like I said, I don't want the emperor to come back. Sure. I don't, I don't want a star killer. 
I don't want planet killer guns on death on uh, star destroyers on moons uh, or on <laughs> moons or anything like that. Just yeah. get rid of the whole Death Star idea and come up with something different that's you know threatening to the galaxy because it wasn't even they didn't the emperor didn't make the death star to destroy the galaxy he just right. made it to terrorize the galaxy <laughs> and to be following him so that he could be a force that no one would ever fight against right i think in the star wars universe one of the worst things they ever have to overcome anywhere in the universe is a friggin blockade there's a blockade in a planet. I, I don't know how we're going to do it. How are we going to get through the blockade? And there's blockades in, in so many episodes. And they're always this big challenge where they're like five ships right here and all of space. But yeah. Man, this blockade is uh, really throwing us off. I know. It, uh, I, it's especially like in the early Clone Wars episodes. I think there's one for Christophsis, right? Yep. The one where Anakin has the long ship that disappears. Um, yep. So, yeah, it, there's always like this cluster of ships, this giant planet behind them. You're like, yep, this is the blockade. You're right. It's yeah, crazy. like with Naboo, right? There's a blockade, and you're, you're, I'm thinking there's just ships everywhere. But like, then you go into this, and like, all right, there's a there's a five ship or, or three star destroyers. You can't backdoor the planet, like, and then yeah. cruise it, around. Like, come on. Remember, like, when Han Solo left Tatooine on episode four, there were suddenly three Star Destroyers. Just, uh, like, you didn't see that? You can't just go around the planet and then leave kind of thing? Because yep. they're not as fast, so they wouldn't be, like, they're even on a longer travel for you to, you know. I don't yeah. Know, maybe. Yeah, that, that doesn't. All right, so <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven is Abrams, right? And, and you're going through this whole new Ray story. What do you do with Finn being able to wield a lightsaber out of nowhere? Well, first of all, do you keep Finn? I liked Finn. I like Finn. I thought he was interesting. I thought it was cool about a stormtrooper uh, like exiting. However, I would have liked to have seen. I kind of they made him so good right off the bat. Like, oh, I'm a stormtrooper. I came out. Nope. I choose good and I move on kind of thing. Right. Sure. I would have liked to have seen a line get crossed. I would have liked to see him like be a stormtrooper and do something that's questionable. Like, I mean, that kind of happens though, yeah? Well, like, well, he never shoots at anybody, right? So I don't mean like shoot or kill anybody, but I mean like maybe he's, it starts off with him as a stormtrooper and he's on this planet and you know, the other ones are like, move along and like kind of pushing people like a crowd or some, and he's not doing it, but then someone throws something at him and he has to, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, make him kind of into it a little bit. And then there's a line to cross. Like, I just didn't feel like I got to know him as a stormtrooper a little bit before he changed. Yeah, I I, I, I read it. I, I did the the implied version, right? Like when he steps onto the planet and all that shit's going down. And you see him kind of like you, you, you feel like he's seen some shit and he doesn't really believe what he's doing anymore. So maybe he's killed some people. Maybe he's seen some people get killed. But see, I, I never thought that way. I thought he was like a new recruit. Well, he was a janitor, right? Oh, yeah. See, that's even worse. Yeah. I, that's, I, how I knew, like that. that's how he knew how to get through the whole, all the bullshit. Because First of all, they don't train stormtroopers to be janitors. They have droids to be janitors. True. Or waste management or whatever it was that. Yeah. There's, like you should never see a stormtrooper just sitting here pulling levers and pushing buttons to do waste management. Well, they really don't do much, right? They just stand around guard doors and fail at everything else that they do. <laughs> target practice. Do sure. Like target yeah. practice. <laughs> Apparently not. Um, but you can't see a thing in that helmet. I have, I have proof. You really can't. I've tried to wear this and like walk around. It's really hard. Oh, that should be the intro to the next show. What, me wearing this? And walking into things. Has this ever happened to you? If I had the whole outfit, uh, that would really work. 
You're like a stormtrooper off the clock. <laughs> you're playing board games. Can't see. But you're like a Mandalorian anymore. where you can never remove your mask. So you're like a Mandaclonian. No, that's not good. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> However, the the Boba Fett helmet you can see really well because that whole thing is open. Mm. So, uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, in seven. I would have Finn, but I'd want to see a little bit more about him. I'd like to learn more about him, you know? Again, just like Ray. I like both characters, but they jump you into it too fast. Yeah, well, there's the whole Phasma story that we don't even know, right? Like, yeah. they have some history, but we, we never... And maybe it's told in the comics or some other canon line, but there's something there where they friggin' hate each other. There's a book about uh, Phasma where she gets apparently, like, her armor is made from the same material that they didn't make Naboo ships from. That's why it's all silver. Oh, okay. Like I, the I'm not sure why, because I don't know much more than that. I didn't read the book. My sister-in-law told me about it. but um, Which is interesting. I might read the book sometime, just because I love the character, but they didn't do much with it. No. Nope. But, yeah, you, if you saw, like, a past yeah. uh, Finn, you could have had more interaction with that, right? Yep. And learn more about her. It yeah. just wasn't enough set up. It felt like, it almost felt like he had this plan for uh, seven, eight, and nine. And then early on, they said, "Hey, we're just going to have you do seven. And he was like, "Oh no, I have to like cram all this stuff in real quick and make you just like Finn immediately, make you just like Ray immediately, and go, go, go to get to at least this point." so that the next movie they can continue kind of feel. Yeah, maybe. I took it as they're trying to they're trying to bring in a whole new crew of Star Wars fans. Right? It's been a minute. They had a bad taste in their mouth with 1, 2 and 3. Now it's Disney. Now they're going to do something like they got to bring in not only the old fans, so they got to cater to to the fans that have been there from the beginning. They got to bring back the fans that they lost with 1, 2 and 3. And then introduce, like, with, um, what was it, Resistance? Like, it was uh, almost like um, like Barbie doll kind of, of figures. But they were all female characters from the shows. Like, they tried to cast their net to a whole bunch, a new audience, a right. young new audience. And yeah. then... And you hey, think that fast eight, eight, seven, eight, eight, nine. Yeah, we're gonna take eight and nine and give it like we're gonna do something else, but we'll take your seven. He's like, well, wait a minute, seven makes no sense without my eight. But they were like, Yeah, we're not using your eight. It's almost like I don't know if they he had to cram it in because he was told, Hey, we're not using you for eight, or he had seven done or done, and then was like, Oh yeah, we're gonna use somebody else for eight. I remember it was early on, even before the first movie came out, that he said he was only doing one. Huh. And, you know, traditionally there were other directors for other Star Wars movies, too, so it made sense. Sure. And I'm sure they talked to each other. Like, hey, this is what I did in 7. I'm sure my... that <laughs> with 7, 8, and 9. Sure, sure. Or they must hate each other if that's the case. I don't know. but Yeah, I don't know how much of that was really... Yeah. I really um... don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's not. I I didn't want to go through the practice just to hate on it, but so much as like say what I would do differently. I guess. I I think your your intro is way more compelling. I think it. I mean, not to say I don't like Ray. I do. That's why I'm mm -hmm. trying to build more into mm -hmm. the character, you know. And I like. Uh, and I liked Finn. He was fun. Uh, had he was kind of the he was more the humor to the whole story than even droids were really when you think about it in the past like droids and jar jar and stuff like that the the humor or goofiness goofy character was always something non-human and he kind of took that on with all his little fish out of water jokes that he did yeah so did poe though Poe po did a little bit, yeah. Oh, his, his, especially in the beginning of eight. I think that was pr one of the best parts of eight 
when he was taunting Hux. Oh, right, right, right. Where oh, he up. Yeah, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Oh, that's his I like all the humor and stuff. Yeah. I would keep all of that. Yep. Um, I just wanted a little bit more reason to care about the characters from the very beginning. I don't like just being told like here's a hero and you like him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the um, same thing you would you would seen that um and I don't know if you know the artist's name, but there was the art going around when Ben stabs Han. Sorry, Kylo stabs Han and Chewie's looking down and then Chewie has that memory of like Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned that to you in like one of the earlier episodes. Yeah. How much different is that scene if if that's given to us, right? Ah. Uh, like on Jakku, in your scenario, on Jakku, if you see like like a younger Chewbacca like playing around with Ben, or all of them at some point, right? Because they go to visit Luke and Look at this giant Wookiee and all the kids are enamored by him. And you have that like chewy Ben moment. Then fast forward to Ben being an asshole. And you're like, oh my God. It's same thing with Chewie and Leia. Once you realize Chewie and Leia have this tremendous history. And then they just bypass each other. Like nothing. Like they don't even know each other. Like, I'm going to go talk to this crewman back here. Because he's cool. Screw you. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> Oh. Um, yeah, the uh, the other thing that the other major thing I would change is I would keep Leia and Han together the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I would want when I see both of them when Han and Chewie come on and go, "We're home." Great scene. Yeah, and then they walk on, and then right behind them. Leia's walking in going, you know, like, you just left me to park this thing without, you know, you didn't let me come in with you, you know, some yeah. them bickering, but, you know, the, the married way and stuff. Sure. And, you know, it just instantly I wanted to see that the happy ending continued because otherwise the little ending at the end of Return of Jedi is, yeah, like them lovingly get together and all that stuff at the end you're like ah it's finally happened but then he's like nah they broke up I mean, yeah like, after a kid han's like i'm out yeah hmm. i mean yeah. the easy the easy way to do it was to say oh yeah he's too different she's a princess or politician or whatever blah 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 but how much more powerful would would their relationship be if they were still together even yeah. after the whole kylo ren their son all of that stuff you know yeah. it would just make it mean more yeah um it, as it, instead it felt like a bad thanksgiving dinner where the <laughs> ex you know the ex-husband and wife meet each other because their kids make them eat or whatever yeah <laughs> Like, I don't want that moment. Nobody wants that moment, that awkward, like, hey, you got a new jacket. Nope, same old jacket or whatever it was they said, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. great. It didn't make me smile. Yeah. No. You know, you've shown me uh, heroes and characters that I've cared about and loved, like, all my life, and they're coming back. You better make me smile when I yeah. see them together, right? Yeah, Han doesn't advance, right? Han is still the guy that's swindling and making deals, backdooring deals, and Leia's just progressed up the... Yeah, Han's regressed. By the end of Return of the Jedi, he's taking responsibility. He's a general. He's a general, yeah. He's volunteering for dangerous missions and stuff. Yep. To help the rebels and fight the Empire. He's become a new man. And yep. they just take all that away in 7. Yep, he loses his ship. He's still got Chewie. But he's wanted by half the galaxy. They all want to kill him. He's he is screwed over everybody. Like the last person he can screw over, he's screwed over. Yeah. He's not even like when she sees Han Solo, she doesn't go, Han Solo. He should be like one of the most famous people in the world. He should be like George Washington. Yeah. Helped refound the alliance and everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
Yep. They should be legendary. So should Chewie. So should the ship. Yep. The ship that blew up the Death Star. Come on. Yeah. Sitting in somebody's desert field. Isn't it referred to as as is it junk or garbage? Uh, like when they're running to the ship that gets blown up, Finn's like, "What about that?" And Ray's like, "Oh, that's junk," or "Oh, that's garbage." Hopefully, it's junk, just to reiterate like what they said in episode four, right? Right. I don't remember but, what to use. Yeah, I don't remember. And then they're like, "Oh, I guess that'll do." Like it shouldn't be junk at that point. It should be in a museum at that point. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it should be at the Alliance Museum. And Han wants to go save stuff, so he breaks it out of the museum or something. Yeah. Uh, it's a totally different direction that I, I wanted. I want if you give me a happy ending for thirty years, let me keep it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see it. It just feels kind of like an artificial way to create more drama or something. If you, I don't know. Yeah, unnecessary. Yeah. Kind of like. Leia embracing this new girl that she just met over a walking carpet that she's known for better part of a century. All right. No use beating a dead ring core. Wow. There you <laughs> carpet. All right. We want to talk about what we've been playing. Sure. What we've been playing. What, what board games have you been playing? I already told you I played Marvel United. Yep. Right? Um, yesterday I played Detective City of Angels. Finally, after a year and a half and not being able to play it. And what do you think? Oh yeah, it's, I've played it seven, eight times now. Love it every time. No different. I lost horribly. But <laughs> this was the most lost I've been in. I was playing a detective with the chisel, that that kind of version. Yeah. Uh, this is the most lost I've ever been on one because I normally whenever they tell you the little story of like, okay, this has happened, go figure out, you know, who the killer is or whatever the thing is. Um, normally when that happens, I go, okay, I'm going to go here because this and those kind of instincts or hunches or whatever you want to call them usually pay off on some information. And But instead I went to one place and I was like, okay, I kind of figured that. Then I went to another place and it told me the same information. I was like, oh, what a waste of time. And yeah. I went another way and I got the same information. It was like CH again. I was like, how many times? Like, I guess it's a very important piece of information. So they gave different ways to get to it. Yeah. But I, for whatever reason, just went directly to those three different ways to find it. Um, and then at the same time, I was watching the other two, my brother and my sister-in-law, we were also playing detectives. Uh, I was watching them just like, ooh, getting stuff. I was like, man, I'm totally out of this. Mm. Not the game's fault at all. I just was making weird, bad choices and stuff. So that was the only time I really felt like I didn't have a chance, and I didn't. Uh, I made a wild guess at the end. It was just totally off. <laughs> so Well done. Still enjoyed it. Still love the story. Cool. Um, played that. Uh, and I also played uh, um, uh, Arnak again. Nice. Runes of Arnak. Yeah, we didn't really. Tell, we got to revisit that because I played that two weeks ago. Oh yeah. So, so the first time. So you played it. Well, you played it. Um, you played it virtually with me, right? No, 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 no. Did you play it virtually? Oh no, no, that wasn't you. That was uh, Corey. Yep. Never yeah, mind. I was, uh, playing something else. So Lost Ruins of Arnak, what do you think? I liked it. I thought it was good. I liked the, the production <laughs> value was great. I, I The art was good. Um, turns seemed fine and quick and you knew what you were doing. Um, wish the monsters were a little different. Um, yeah. Thematically, right? Like, Agree. Yeah. I go to explain, I go to explore this place. Great. I get some stuff great, and all of a sudden this snake appears, and it takes a boot and a thing to. I just got a boot and two things, and now it's going to take a boot and a thing to watch shoo it away. Like that <laughs> seemed weird. Yeah, I agree with that aspect. I think it would have been much cooler if, whenever that monster appears, if you can't get rid of it, 
then there's some kind of negative effect on you until you do. Well, there is, right? You lose. If if you if you pull back, you get like a fear card in your deck. That doesn't. Yeah, but if you're at the end of your turn, if a monster is at your location, you get something. Yeah, you get a fear card. Right, you don't have to leave. You can leave. Well, no, it's not at the end of your turn. It's at the end of your uh, at the, the end round. of running. If you pull a person back and there's a monster there, you get a fear card. Right, 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 right. Um, but I was hoping for something more thematic, like okay, it's a scorpion, right? The scorpion says that as long as you have a person there, and that scorpion's still alive, you uh, the everything on the uh, you know advancement research track takes an extra compass or something. Although I would have that thing be something that looks like it goes with the creature. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Probably harder to do, but at least then you could be like, oh, the scorpion, it slows me down over here. Or the 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 serpent, it, you know, wraps around me and makes sure that my character can't move to anywhere else. Or, you know, stuff like that. Like, I wish the monsters had some kind of thematic mechanism that worked with them yeah i like i think the fear works right works i mean you're at the location the monster is definitely fearful like holy crap but it like to get one at the end and then the negative points you get from the fear didn't seem to balance like it didn't it didn't seem thematic the fear seemed thematic but like why am i i'm just losing a point or two or three like you're well you're actually losing six points which is huge in this game for one fear card? For not killing the monster. Oh, sure, because it's five points if you do kill it. It's five sure. points. And, and you get whatever little bonus sure. uh, boon that it has, right? Which is really pathetic. Yeah, way. totally. Like, that didn't even... Try. Cost. Yeah, what? I get a boat for killing a snake? I don't understand. That's why in our game, I like that we have the fate bump and stuff, but we can't. Yeah, yeah well, uh, plus monsters are a little different, too. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, there are some parts of it that don't quite like the mechanisms. They're very clean. Yeah. They work very well. Yep. But they also, there are some parts like that, that I wish they tied in just a little bit more with the theme because the artwork on those monsters are so awesome. Sure. I want something when they showed like the, there's something like giant owl thing or giant eagle or something like that that comes swooping down at you and one of those pictures yeah but it you know there's no there's nothing thematically that happens because it has wings right or, or a stinger or whatever it is that it has right right right, right. future expansions yeah i oh and if they came out with a arnak expansion where the monsters had some kind of thematic uh effect mm -hmm. totally buy it that's what we did with Batman, our our masterminds expansion, mm -hmm. with the uh, the masterminds being kind of dull, right? They all had a life and they all did something. They just stood there. Um, we made the masterminds actually do something. Like they interact with the game in different ways. Like Man Bat's on the city, the Joker. You gotta like call out a die roll, and if you get it, then you capture him. But if you don't get it, he moves to the next battlefield. So like. He can elude you. It was it's real the Riddler has stuff for poison ivy has stuff around. Like they actually engage with you in, in a different way that are thematic to the villain, where it would be really neat for them to and I don't know if I don't know if it needs it though, right? Like, do you really need to feel thematic when you're attacking a scorpion? Are you really attacking a scorpion? Like I mean, I wanna feel like I'm facing a scorpion, maybe. Sure. sure. And the the weird thing is like if it just had like a symbol of a scorpion and be like oh a scorpion I'd be like, okay I wouldn't even think about it but because the artwork is so cool yeah kind of want to actually thematically engage with that scorpion what if the monster had a, a box like an, a legacy box like an unlock box and when you drew the monster like let's say it was a scorpion you had to pull the same image box out of the out of the big box and you open it up and it was really a scorpion. It was a real scorpion that comes out and stings you? Yes. That's the kind of theme I want. Right? Now it's thematic. Now you gotta like hold now run Kickstarter away. Exclusive. 
<laughs> yeah, a big owl bear comes out of a thing like an owl bear. <laughs> now it's really thematic. <laughs> Serpent. You're in, or like Medusa's head, and now you're stone. Has this ever happened to you? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, but I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Um, it's it's definitely it's 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 got a lot going for it. So I can see, I can see it being on the top of a lot of people's list. They did a really good job with production value, yeah. the way the game feels. It was good. We we've done a review on it, or well, I did one, and you got to ask me questions. I guess I'm sure did. Uh, uh, comparing this with Dune, you haven't played Dune Imperium, right? I have not. It'll be interesting whenever you play that, so I could hear what you think of in comparison because. Yeah. Uh, I think that Arnak has cleaner mechanisms than Dune. Right. But I still just like by a fraction like Dune a little bit more. Hmm. And I think it just comes down to experience. Like the experience that I have playing Dune feels a little more like I'm in that world. Yeah. Hmm. Um yeah, what else uh what else you've been playing? Um I played Oath on Saturday. All right. Well, that was the end of the show. Oath on Saturday. Uh, okay. No, we we really we played it three player. We didn't if, finish the game. If someone doesn't know, I had a little problem with. Uh, <laughs> it's just four chapter. Yeah. Nice. Um. Uh, I had a little problem with Oath and the fact that you can't play the first game with two players and that's how I learn all my games. Uh, I won't get into it. You can't play your first game as two players because they recommend you not play with the AI for two players as your first game. So it's kind of like this catch 22. Right. And you can't play without the AI if you're playing with two players. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So getting past all that, how many people did you play with? By the way? Three. Okay. So what you think? I don't even remember at this point. I've tried to block it out of my head. I don't even remember what it's about. <laughs> so. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Is um, this going to stick on my shelf of shame even longer? No. I. You should play it. The walkthrough, although it's annoying, because they're like, you just draw this, and this is what you're going to do. The game is set up. It's it's manufacturing, right? It's set up to make sure the right cards are in the right places. So when they walk you through, draw these three cards. Now select this from your hand. You have this in your hand. Like, that's all smart, but it's all, it all. I mean, it's predetermined, right? You can do that during manufacturing. I don't see the hurdle of you playing it as a two-player with the AI if you just go through the setup and understand it's helping you understand how the game is played. Like you're going to draw here, you're going to do this. And then it's like, this is your turn. This is why you did the shit you just did. Now go to the next player. Now the next player is going to do this and they're going to ready this and they're going to draw from here. And this is why you did all of those things because you're trying to do this to the chancellor and you're trying to win. And this is how you win kind of thing. So I think the initial setup playthrough is just teaching you how to play the game. And I, I'm i not I'm not sure because obviously I can't experience it that way. But I honestly think it was what I was saying before where you're an experienced gamer, so you know what to do in certain games. So those like, we don't recommend you play it this way because, or like don't use the advanced, like seasons. Don't use these cards if it's your first game. Only use these, we suggest. All right, but I've been playing games for a while. I understand how game mechanisms work. I'm going to throw in the expansion stuff. I'm going to throw in, like, uh, water deep, right? You're going to play with, with corruption because you understand you're a gamer and you understand how the advanced mechanisms work. Like, it's not that hard. So the, the hurdle of don't play this with the AI if this is your first game, but you can't play it as a two-player without the AI, I think you'll be fine in getting getting through that, although it might test your patience to get through that wall. Okay, so... Here's my questions, uh, because I think you said that because you know how I feel maybe about walkthroughs. Do I have to go through the walkthrough? 
Well, can I, can, you, can I just read the rules and then play the game? Yeah, didn't you spend five hours reading the, the walkthrough already? No, 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 that was a different game. What was that game? That was a skate plan. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. That's right. You're trying to get all the rants, aren't you? I am, yeah. <laughs> what else can we bring up in this? Let's see. <laughs> um, I I got to the first page that told me not to play this game, and that's it. I didn't go beyond that. I think you would be fine for getting the walkthrough and playing the game. The problem is... Is there a story or element or something? No. Like, you can read that, right? The Chancellor's doing a thing. You're in exile. You're trying to either you know, become a citizen and win with the chancellor if this happens or take the oath, ke oath keeper, oath breaker, oath, oath breaker. Nope. Oath keeper. You're, and you're trying to win at the end of your turn or at the beginning of your turn. When you wake, you have these conditions met, you win. So I, you'll understand how it all works. The, the problem is, and my biggest thing on the game is I don't understand war games and this is a war game. Yeah. So, cool. have you ever played Root? No. Okay, that's also a war game, really. Right, right, because it's designed by, and it's a great design. But the the hurdle with that is, I I haven't. I mean, I, Bobby can, and he said he can, but I haven't been in the same place with someone who knows all of them to teach them. I've been around people that have played it and can teach their role that they played well, but they can't teach the other three. So really, we can't play the game. Talking about Root, yeah. I can, I can teach all of them. This game is different. Play again. This game has the Chancellor and the Exiles. But your turns are the same. You win. Your win condition is different. Right? When you wake, if this. But that's all pretty clear. On your turn, you're still doing the same thing. The way your supply works. The way your actions work. The way you can do different things. Get your banners out there. Like, that all works the same. Whereas Root, from my understanding is everyone's different. Everyone does something completely different. And then there's Vast, which is like the easiest of the bunch, which is easy to understand. You can pick it up and teach it pretty quickly. Roots, the next step. And now Oath is like, holy shit, step. <laughs> but the problem is, and I kept, Keith and I had a horrible time with the game because we just did, even when the, during the, 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 the playthrough or the walkthrough, when it was like, now you're going to draw these cards. Now, let's say you pick this card and you're going to play this card. Okay, now you discard the rest. All right, I get how discard works now. It's teaching me that. I'm going to play this card, and then I'm going to use another supply to do this thing on the board. I'm going to use another supply to play this card in the world and whatever. And then it would explain to you why you're doing it. Like, okay, great. Like, I heard what was just told to me. I don't understand what was just told to me. And there's a lot of the game that just plays differently than a Euro or an Ameritrash or a, a, a card game or a dice selection. Like it's not, they're not game themes or game mechanisms that I'm used to. So I can't wrap my head around gotcha. that. It's like playing Scythe for the first, first three times. I hated it. I didn't like it. I didn't understand it. I don't understand how my faction, the way that I have my card, it's requiring me to get wood, but there's no wood around me. I have to now, Travel across the river. Oh, wait a minute. I can't travel across the river until I do this thing, which friggin' requires wood. Like, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. I hated it. But after a couple playthroughs, like, I get it. It makes sense to me. I love the game. It's awesome. I'd play it almost constantly anywhere I was if people wanted to play it. And I feel Oath has so... The art, it's pretty. The manufacturing is great. Um, as they as all of their games are, their wooden meeples, like all of that stuff is just through the roof. Great. It's just the concept of playing that type of game is foreign to me. Mm. And it's a bad experience in the beginning. For me, walkthrough, I, I don't mind that they exist if I can skip them. Sure. But for me, you cannot teach an entire game in a normal walkthrough. Because there are too many scenarios and I have questions. Sure. Because it feels like someone's telling you, like, here was here's what you could do on the turn. You could go here and do this. And I want to go, well, what happens if I go here? Right. And they don't cover that. And then after the end of the walkthrough, I feel like I still don't know how to play. I have to go read the rules. So why did I go through a walkthrough? Right. If you give me a walkthrough 
and you're so confident that I don't need the rules afterwards, that you don't put the rules in there, I'd try it. But if you've put rules in there with a walkthrough, I don't want your walkthrough. Because obviously I don't need it. I need the rules. Right. Just get it out of my face. I don't want it. It's so annoying. Especially, okay, come on. Oath is a huge game, and it costs a lot of money. Yep. No person, uh, okay, for the most part, no gateway, hasn't played a lot of games person is getting this game. The people bu putting down money like this for these games, we know how games work. So don't put me through a walkthrough. Yes. But... It's not like dumping $150 on an awesomely produced game that you're familiar with its mechanisms, right? Like, this all makes sense. It's not a rant. It's not a rant. It's just a request. Yeah, sure. To allow me to skip walkthroughs. That's all I'm asking. I'll push you over. <laughs> um, it's not that you're spending... X amount of dollars on a game because of production value or because of metal coins or monsters that roar when you put them on the table, right? Like at its core, you're still familiar with that type of game. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to get something for it. That's my turn. And I think the walkthrough in this scenario, because it looks pretty, it's modern board game. It could be interpreted that it's that type of game that we're familiar with. And it it for me, it is not at all. I don't under I still don't like trying to wrap my head around it afterwards was like, I don't understand what is going I for a while I thought it was just shit. Like it's just like this is I never want to play it again. It's a bad game. I don't understand what the hell's going on. And it's because I don't understand what's going. I'm not familiar with that game. But we also talked about it for a while after, which means it had the same thing with Scythe. It's value. Yeah. Like, there's definitely a lot going on. It is a completely different game than I'm used to. But I want to do it again? Well, then, yeah, that's good. I mean, uh, okay, I'm, I could, could pass it up. No, it's not a house roll. Stop. Try to antagonize. <laughs> Well, um, it says in the rules not to play it as your first play with two player in the AI, and you choose to do it, then technically I recommend. Mm, okay. Anyway, um, I'm never. I don't want to be the guy who says, "Don't make this thing." Nobody's asking for it because somebody is asking for it. Somebody sure. wants it. You you even said uh, that it might be the kind of game that does require stuff. Just allow me to skip it if I don't want it. It's the same thing as like putting theme in the rules, right? Right. Don't mind if theme is in the rules. Just kind of put that in the yellow box or whatever right. so that people right. who enjoy it can read it and I can skip it. Um, just allow different paths for the way people learn games. Right. Um, I, I think it, my initial my initial response to you saying that, if you remember was I think it's more of a suggestion and the fact that you're a gamer and have been playing games for X amount of years, you could probably play it two player with the AI and don't worry about them saying, don't do it this way. You should be fine with it. And I, and after playing it and going through the walkthrough, figuring out what the walkthrough was doing, I refer back to that saying, I think you'd be fine. Although prepare yourself for a completely different experience than, I mean, you're familiar with root. So maybe not. I'm not familiar with Root. I was not ready for Oath. Yeah, uh, Root is, um, I mean, it's it's right, right up there as like one of the most impressive designs for me because of the amount of work that they've done to balance out these factions. Sure. Um, so I, but the biggest problem, of course, is teaching. Right. You have to teach every single person a different game whenever you begin the game. And every time, too. Because right. when you bring it back the next night, the next game night, everybody wants to play a different faction. So now mm -hmm. you can teach everybody a different game because, you know, yeah. he wasn't listening when you were teaching her how to play birds. Obviously. Right. Why would they? Right. So when they play birds, then, you know. Right. Uh, 
Oh, God, he didn't care for root. That's I, I totally get not caring for root. Uh, for one, it does have a warlike element. Mm-hmm. And it's wrapped up in a strangely cute world, which kind of that they they don't quite fit. Right. So I think sometimes that pulled in an audience that wouldn't have liked the kind of fighting thing. I don't generally like fighting games that much, but I love the way that the factions fit together so well mm. and how they interact with each other that uh, I guess I kind of look, it's my exception, right? Mm. Um, I don't know how Oath plays and if it has the same issue as in like having to teach someone over and over and over, um, if they play someone else, is that the case? No. Yeah. Okay, so that's cool. I'm interested in trying it because that's the major hiccup. In yeah, the there's, there's two things, right? You're the chancellor, or you're in exile. Okay. As far as as far as I know, I don't know. We didn't. We only played three, so I don't know if there's other creatures in the game that you can be. But the rule book is set up like, and this is courtesy of Bobby because I I seem like this is gonna like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. The rule book had like that. Don't worry. You don't seem like you look like you. Good. I want to make sure I stay true to (laughs) my character. Um, I roll like shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. What else? Um, The rule book is set up like when you go to a rule, it's like 7.1.5, 7.1.6, which apparently is an old war gamers setup for rule books. So like that's the way that that reads, which is clear and concise. If you're going through a battle, and you want to know if you won or lost and what to do if you've won or lost. Like, it's very clear. The What is not clear, especially in the first playthrough, is what happens when the Chancellor offers an exile citizenship because your board can flip over. You get some cool shit from the Chancellor. The Chancellor is unlocking something, and you're getting a benefit. But now you're a citizen. You're not an exile. So, like, your role kind of changes. And... Keith was the chancellor and he was like, all right, what do I do? And I, we don't know. I, we had no idea. Mm. It might've been clearer in the rules than it was in the setup. But when it was like, here's your turn one, this is why you did turn one. Great. Here's my turn one. And here's why you did what you did on turn one. Right. And then when we got back to Keith's second turn, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like they let you off the rails. Like they kept you on the rails Here's what you do. This is why you're doing it. Now go. And we were that wild animal that ran right back into the crate. <laughs> like, fuck that. We're going back here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I want to go hide out. That's interesting. I will say that Root, because uh, I hadn't read the Oath one, Root did not have that clear of rules for me. Uh, in fact, I just found out that I'd been playing it wrong uh, but because I was playing it on Steam, which is, by the way, the best board game app there is um i was playing it on steam i was like what i don't get points for destroying roosts and i looked it up i was like this whole time Mm. and getting two points every time you destroy a roost Mm. i don't know how many times that was ever done rarely Mm. probably by me but nice you know just one little thing sure that or you know maybe the app is wrong i don't know at this point because the rules aren't great right honestly and I wonder if that's why Oath is so clear on their their walkthrough. Because Maybe. people thought Root was like a regular type of game and they were smacked in the face with this war game type experience that they weren't ready for. So now they're super clear in their rule book. Like, look, this is what we're going to do. Let's take you through a couple turns and this is why you're doing what you're... I don't know if that's true, but that kind of makes sense that they walk you through that whole that hand-holding for, for that entire first turn. But man, when they cut the cord and you're off, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I know, I know what you're talking about, Katya. I, it, it, that's exactly what could happen in that game quite a mm-hmm. bit. Um, I would also, if you don't like that, recommend not playing uh, Cyclades or Inish because you that those are the kind of games where you're right there at the end and then you get snatched back from the jaws of victory or whatever that saying is yeah uh, yeah it's that's it feels like there's one finish line and everybody's grabbing onto each other and pulling them back before they get pulled back you know that kind of feel yeah but that can happen yeah Hmm. 
I'm really curious on Root. I want to play it, but. <laughs> what is Kingdom Death Monster? Yeah, Kingdom Death is is super fun. Never Have played, you played that. No, we talked about that before, though. You asked. Oh me. yeah, yeah. That's really good. Um, but yeah. I, so, final question then: Can I skip the walkthrough and play two player with a bot after reading rules and be okay? You? Yeah. I don't know how the bot plays. So I can't, I mean, maybe not, okay. but you're, from what I know of you, you're pretty intelligent. Although you lose 90% of the games you play, I believe. Not 90 per, I have the stats, but I mean, 85. the problem is my partner's, it's intelligent too. And so she, she beats me quite a bit, but I have the stats. It's almost 50, 50. It's like 55, 45. Yeah, so you tell us, Chris. So you tell us. I'm right here. I can show the camera, you know, something nobody cares about. You're also a graphic designer and are good with technology. So you've That's probably fair. the whole situation. That's fair. I always said, I hope I'm not someone who got a picture of aliens landing because no one's going to believe me. Nope. They're just going to think that I photoshopped it. Yep. Yeah, I've only been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't believe any stats you have on your phone. <laughs> I could nope. totally I could totally fake that. Sure. Well, I'm the one that puts the information in too, so nobody's yeah. checking me. <laughs> Again, right, true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's easier than Photoshop, I guess. Just put in the wrong information. But why track it if I'm doing that? So for moments like this. That's true. And you didn't even let me have my moment. Six months I've been tracking games. And you didn't let me have my moment. Oh, but it doesn't even have to be six months. You can do it over a weekend. Just put in a whole bunch of games over a weekend. That's annoying. You'd have to do it at different times. I'm pulling it up now because I want to know. Okay. I have won 35 out of 69 games this year. It's not bad. How many of them are solo, and how many of them are with an AI? None are solo. <laughs> I don't do that. And uh, technically, Escape Plan had an AI for two players. Okay. Uh, real basic one. Didn't bother me that much. Okay. I don't like them, but some games are fine with them. I prefer just playing like the two-player sure. game. As it should be, but not all games can do that, right? So, yeah, yeah um, I, th I think you'd be fine. I think it's worth a go just so you absolutely hate it and let me buy you your copy. I'm not gonna sell it. Why you're not gonna play it? I got plenty of games I don't play. <laughs> if you hate it so much, why would you keep it? So that I can look at it and stare at something. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think yeah, as I a gamer, games. as an intelligent gamer with an intelligent gamer partner, I think you guys would be fine playing through it without the walkthrough. Just okay. jump into it and play. The problem is, I mean, just be ready for a, an experience. But you think that their, uh, their initial warning a recommendation should stand for most people, especially if they haven't had experience with root and stuff like that. I, well, yeah. I mean, now knowing it, right. Like if I cracked that open and I was going through it, like, although it was our first experience with it, like we, we, I understand turn order, but I still can't wrap my head around what I need to do in order to, to, to get what I need to win. Like I don't get, I haven't wrapped my head around how that how the world works. I right, the answers are fine. Yeah. The mechanisms are fine. They're all pretty. Like you've done them before in other games, but like getting your head around how in the world am I gonna like? And I wonder if the AI is the chancellor, or if the AI is just another exile fighting against you as the chancellor with Aaron as another exile. Like I wonder where the AI sits in that triumvirate, but word thank you it's <laughs> early enough right i hit it before midnight i'm good um yeah i think you'd be fine i think it's worth a go 
All right. It's fascinating how it how it works, how the how the world plays, how the locations work. But getting to where you need to, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll give it a try. I've definitely had that experience before, where you've you played a game and you're like, okay, I I see how to play, but I don't know how one wins at this yeah. game. Yeah, I've had that experience before. In I, fact, um, Splendor, as simple as it is. Trip me up uh, when we first played. I made Aaron play it like 20 times. Mm. And it wasn't because I was frustrated at losing. It was that I just didn't understand why I lost. Like How many I, of those 20 did you lose? 19. That's definitely not 50%, Chris. Oh, no, no. This was years ago when Splendor came out. I'm just saying. I'm just talking about the last six months. Oh, uh, okay. When you started keeping track, when you actually started winning, yeah. Mm. Oh, speaking of winning, just a little brag. Uh, uh, last night we played Arnak, right? Um, our scores was 58, 59, 60, and sixty. Wow, that's how close it was. I was sixty, Aaron was sixty, and I won with the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker? Wow, did you really win though? I mean, yeah, that's the best win. Mm. That's the very best win when it's just right there. That's like, you know, that's like the finish line, nose to nose kind of thing. That's the best way to win. Everybody was so close. And in fact, the uh, my brother had 59. And had he had one more point, he would have had the tiebreaker. So he was just one point away from winning. That's good. Good to know I wasn't the only one. <laughs> uh, so anyway, little brag, just for fun. Just a little. It wasn't. It wasn't so much a brag as it was just a fun experience at the mm. end of the scoring, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've also lost to that just little tiebreaker before, you know, and it's still just as fun when it's that exciting at the end, because we like to do, especially with the games that have the little lines on the scorecard. We like to go, okay, you got 15, I got 17. Okay, you got 12, I got nine. And, you mm. know, so that you can kind of feel how we're doing as we go. Sure, yeah, yeah. Total it up and then, you know. Like Red Rising. <laughs> you got to bring it up every episode. <laughs> Have you played it again? No, 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 no. Have you gotten rid of it? No. You talk about how you don't like it so much, and yet you keep playing it and keep it. Because I, wh wh how did you say it earlier? You want to keep it on your shelf and stare That's at it. Me. Yeah. That's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it has. I think it's good at the regular level. I don't think it's worth it at the deluxe level. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah, we we've beaten this thing to mm -hmm. death. But so, yeah, I agree. It's a good game at the. $30 level at 30 or $35? Uh, I think the regular retail is $40. Eh, get, go somewhere and get it for less than $40. Well, I mean, you might be able to buy someone's used copy at some point <laughs> when they get fed up with it, but the regular edition... I'm when the, you're the, done staring at it? Yeah. <laughs> I got... I don't even want to tell you. Um, I should make a shelf full of games I just want to stare at be mad at. Yeah, before, you should turn your helmets around to stare at the shelf of games that you want to stare They're at. They're always being looked at. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. don't have that many games that I would do that to. I keep looking just in case. There are a few I'm tired of playing, but... Ooh, that seems like another episode of the top five games we're tired of playing. Ooh, yeah, we should do that. One. Hmm. We should get everybody to do it next episode. Give but us the top, top five games... And we'll just cut through them real quick. Yeah, because that's we're gonna have a, bu a bunch of people that could take a, that could take a minute. Do you know how many yet, or we have a final count? No. All right. Well, we'll just have a bunch of people and play some games and have fun. Yeah, it'll be good. I want to draw more monsters and laugh at each other. Oh yeah, monstrosity, great game. Oh god, so much fun. All right. Well, it is getting pretty late for us, so why don't we go ahead and say goodbye? Sure. Before we hit the three three hour mark, 
Just going to remind you that uh, if you're a good, kind person and and care about the world and people that you've been listening to for three hours, it would be nice to have a like. Well, also, oh, wait, can, well, does it count as your birthday if it's midnight my time? Nope. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am actually like an hour and five minutes away from being older. If that's something to celebrate. Yeah, hopefully you're nowhere near 52 because that would be old. Super old. Poor, poor Mr. Wilson. Do you know how old I am? That was my guess for next week. Oh, really? No. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. How old do you think I am? Oh, God. Are we, we, mentally? And, and, it... and let, me just, let me just tell you, you're not going to offend me in any way with a real guess. I, I don't I don't care. No, that's fine. I, I, I would I would hope to offend you, actually. Okay. Um, well try. Mentally or physically? Re it, real life. Hmm. I don't want to hear the mentally one. <laughs> I've got Star Wars toys behind me. <laughs> I'm gonna say based on what we've talked about, based on mostly the cartoon question you had for me. Oh, the, look at that. That's funny. Nice. I'm going to say you were born in the early 80s. I'm going to say 83. My sister was 82. I'm going to say 83. You were born in 83. For a minute there, I thought you were saying I was 83 years old. No. If you are, you're fantastic. And I want to know what you're drinking. <laughs> uh, so you think I was born in 83. Correct. Uh, which puts me at what? Is that? Actually, she says 38. Is that 83? Well, I mean, 81 so, would be 40. Right. Yeah. So you're agreeing with Katya that you think of 30. 2001, 2011, 2021. Yeah, so 81, you'd be 40. So 83 yeah. would put you at 38. Weird. Um, ah, that is weird. <laughs> I am, yeah, reverses it. Uh, I am, uh, in one hour, going to be 43 years old. Oh, wow. So 77? So we started our show when I was 42. Huh. Uh, actually, 78. Okay. Born 78. Cool. Yeah. So that's good. Like that. Yeah. Evan was closest, basically. Yeah. Like, currently 42. Nice. A full 42. I didn't even think about that until maybe like a month into it. Someone gets me, someone asked me how old I was. I had to think about it. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm 42. Wait, I'm on a show called 42. That's great. Does Peter know your your age, your birth? Your... I have no clue. It, he might have. He should have. Maybe. I don't know about should have. His comment earlier was the full 43. Oh, that's probably what he meant then. Huh. I saw that. I thought he was just off. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's a four. For... That's why I said I think Peter's been drinking. Yeah. Slick. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. If that was, if that was done on purpose, that was that was slick. Well done. Yeah, I think you would know how old I am. He, we've been friends for, wow, a while, actually. Mm. Since 2013, I want to say. 12, maybe. Mm. He contacted me while I was doing my first Kickstarter. So. And he's still friends with you. I know. Well, we don't live near each other, so. Mm, that'll do it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you're already getting tired of me. I get I get it. So Sure, yeah, and it's been, what, six months? Shit. Yeah, not even. That's why I drink when we talk. <laughs> it's been 20 episodes. Is, that exactly? is it 20? Yep. This, this, is, this is episode 19, and we started with episode zero. So this is our 20th episode. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. How many we get? I guess we get 54 in a uh, week. We probably skip like. Maybe Christmas or something. I don't know what we'll do whenever stuff like that happens. But 54 in a week? What? 
<laughs> he was just goofing, but he'll take credit. Oh, well, you got it. Well done. What you know, I was saying in a year we'll have what fifty four episodes, right? Because we do it every week. But oh, sorry, fifty two. Okay. And once you get old, you know your brain. Are you a robot? <laughs> um, but so yeah, unless we miss a one. So I guess maybe we're about half a year in. Yeah, almost there. Yeah, almost having fun. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure uh, only our um, uh, best. Oh. Technically, oh, yeah. yeah. I Look thought it was going to be our 20th because it's going to, sh- it would show that it was our 20th, but because of I'm episode not even zero. I'm those episodes like right, that, right. because the zero thing threw me off. I hate saying this is episode 19 or 20th episode. So I'm not doing yeah. That. Yeah. So next week, our 21st episode will be on the 21st of June. Mm-hmm. Where I'll be turning twenty-one. It's amazing. Mm. I don't know your age either. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna guess offline. <laughs> Whoa! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do you want me to guess? It's up to you. Let's see. You got more gray in your beard. I've had gray since I was thirteen. Oh well, that doesn't help then. Nope. Always looks like I'm eating Oreos. Like I always have is always white right here. I always got the sense that you were younger than me. And <laughs> since you thought I was born in 83, I'm gonna guess that you were born in 85. Making you 36. Wow. So yeah, how old Donnie, are you? Donnie Gray since 13. Um you are off. Way off? Are you older than me? Almost way off. Are you older than me? I am. Really? Hey, kudos then. Yep. 44, 45? 76. Thank you much. Oh, okay. So uh, you'll be 45 this year. 46. Or 40. How is that possible? 45. I don't (laughs) do math. (laughs) Okay. Who said it before? (laughs) Was it Evan that said something? I don't do math. Yeah, Evan, I'm with you, man. I don't do math either. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fine. Twenty-six to twenty-one. So yeah, that'd be forty-five. Kudos. Yeah. You don't have any gray in here. It's just in here. Wow. At least that. Oh no, no, there's a lot of it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It started here, and then it went to here, and now it's just kind of streaky. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, now that we've had our confessions, we can end the broadcast. Perfect. And it technically is after midnight. So, from the East Coast to you, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Um, as we said before, we like to go into Discord after this. So, yep. meet us up in Discord in the Bat Cave channel, and we like to talk for a little bit longer. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone, for uh, paying attention for three hours. Uh, Maybe you weren't paying attention, but you made it look like you were. So thank you. (laughs) All right. Hey, everybody.